smell of victory is in the air. Yeah, man. I feel it already, you know. I feel it already, you know. This is going to be a memorable, this is going to be a momentous weekend. This is going to be a momentous weekend coming up on thing and thing. When we raise the picture cup and all these things. When we end people cooking career and all these things. Uh, hey, listen to me now. Craig Tan, me see ya do that look at Del Marine something there, you know, ya wobbly in a Craig Tan, Craig Tan. Craig Tan look, Craig Tan, he look like he dip on the fence, you know, Craig Tan, me see ya la, Craig Tan. Craig Tan, how long we are juggle now, Craig Tan? Have we, we have, have we 20 years, 20 years, Craig Tan, and... Oh, Team Rock. Oh, the boss said Team Rock. 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 You see, Greg, you are the boss. You're not coming out one day. If you don't have a Del Marino, the thing, you know, you understand. Because you know Del Marino, we blow up, we blow up, we blow up, we blow up, we blow up. You understand? Big up yourself, Greg. Greg, come now, come now. Team Rock. Team Rock. Team Rock. Team Rock. Team Rock. What you talking about? Dirty up, dirty up, dirty up, 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 but if you really are going to eat the name bad food, don't make Java try to lead you astray, right? I just yesterday I had the nail tech, I had the first them clean our finger nail them and thing, yeah? 
Just yesterday, the nail tech, the nail tech clean her finger nail them. Her finger nail them, the dirty all this time. And them finger, they, them did I use her cook food. Craig Dan. Don't make them. Uh, Craig Dan, Craig Dan, them sneaking, you know. Them sneaking, you know. Yes, yo, them take time. See, the Maxine Evans, Team Raga, Pilot Robinson, Team Raga. Craig Tan, them sneaking, you know. Them sneaking, Craig Tan. So don't make them work, pain them out. I look up weird with them sneak run. People don't know it's a liquid weird. <laughs> look at the question well, like, Raga, why you always a wipe your mouth? Um liquid. Even if I always a wipe my mouth. Um Why are you interested in that? Why is that bad you? Eh? Oh, liquid, um... Why you watch my mouth? Why you watch your mouth? Wipe my mouth. Mm, liquid. How are you going to Papa? You good? Liquid, you good? You hear me I say, stop watching my mouth, you yeah? <laughs> Liquid, stop watching my mouth. You're not tired for get beaten, liquid. You're not tired for we beat you for your weirdness. <laughs> yeah? People, I'm a general, you know, I'm a bridge with you, know, so what we beat out in class when they get beaten. Liquid, what kind of thing that you're going to ask about why me always a, why me always a wipe my mouth? Liquid, liquid, even if you have one that, you know, pick it up here and say, you know, come out and ask them something there. You know? Right? Liquid, make a woman ask them something there, man. What you about? I want me always a wipe my mouth, boy. Eh? Even if you uh, even if you notice it. You think I you alone notice my always have a rag come? Hmm? Other people notice it too, or whatever. But you know, this nobody not ask. But liquid have to come out. Liquid who no come for the thing that much and whatever. But when you come, you come with something like, raga. Why you always a wipe your mouth, Raga? I notice your mouth in a rag. Liquid, I wear up on you. My youth, I wear up. Stop, watch my mouth. Liquid, stop, watch my mouth. Liquid, liquid, liquid is a man mouth watcher, don't you? He's a man mouth watch. Hmm. We impose anything, you mean? And that's the other thing with him, you know. When him come out and you start take it to him, you know, him back up. Cause him don't know for war, you know. Liquid care war. You know see dog by kill him what right there. You know see dog by kick him foot what right there. And when him try for war and think him could have come out with something. Liquid don't watch my mouth. Go watch Delmarine mouth. At Delmarine mouth, you for watch. You understand? Watch a traitor woman mouth over ants there. Liquid, go join the ants there, screw. Ants there, screw. Um, you know I take in liquid. Yeah, man. Liquid is that nice, you know, on the crew. Ants there, screw. Take in liquid, you know? And then, you know, like, you know, take, take in one big old ants. <laughs> mm, take in a big old ants with the fan, you know? Liquid. You are now, the way you join Antsness crew is to declare yourself. Because of that Delmarine do as she join. I remember you did over Delmarine in a liquid. And Delmarine got the Antsness crew say, if you go over there for Delmarine liquid, a confidence do it. Gangsta thing do it liquid, right? You know, women love that stuff, you know, confidence. You know, know what you want, but don't be too arrogant with it, yeah? But just know what you want and go over in the Antsness for you the liquid. Go over in the Antsness crew for Delmarine. Over there, she there, right? And and a, and a, and a, and a boot, a boot catcher over there, and see if you can buy her two shoes and thing and whatever, you know. That way, uh, liquid look, me I put on um, chapstick like that. Do something for you. <laughs> <laughs> liquid, me I put on chapstick for my lip like like. like wait, wait, that hit the spot, also. <laughs> yo. Liquid, I will watch your mouth for. Liquid, where you going to say? You know, say, I rag I'm me. I, liquid, where you going to do that for now? Where you going to do that for now? Where you, liquid, you should have known better years you listen to me in a dog. 
You know, so by you go right there, so now I think I beat me, I got beat out crosses out of here and whatever, you know. Why, why you gonna do that? Why, why you gonna set up? No, it cannot be overemphasized. Liquid walks alone. <laughs> All right, liquid. Make them know liquid juggle alone. All right. Yo, you know, you're not a friend of company. Liquid, look. Now wipe on my eye. Mm. What that do for you now? You all right? Now why put my eye? You want me to do it slow motion for you? All right, here we go, Matrix. <laughs> eh? That do anything for you? Liquid, people, liquid in a, liquid in a, um, ants nest crew, people. All right? Them soon put out the thing for sure that he has been formally inducted. And, uh, you know, the might have a look at picture of Del Marine there, you know? Because when you join the Antinous crew, them love for show you what catch you, you know? So you see, when they catch Del Marine, they put the little careless red boot on or something, if you say, I that catch Del Marine, you know? So when they put in, when they going to make liquid one now, you know, so they going to put a little something there, you know? With Del Marine and whatever, if you say, I that catch the guy. You know, because they might build them thing, yeah, you know, son? So liquid, right I know you're in at the Antinous crew. Everybody... I got liquid no what me do. Natasha Dripper, I got liquid no what me I do with Femi Mount. So I want to take set for you. Oh, Natasha, what I, liquid no what me I do with Femi Mount. So I want to take set for you. Eh? What? Raga liquid no what me I do with Femi Mount. So him want to take set by you. People, never come upon something sometimes when I don't know, understand it. I don't know. I don't know, understand it, but The spirit of self-preservation tell you, say, leave it alone. Don't try to understand it. Don't go down the path if you figure out where I'm going. This is one of those things, you know. This is one of those things. Raga. Liquid. No, this is Natasha Drupal, you know, she should write that on the Tom Farm TV page over YouTube. Raga. Liquid. No, what me, that I she, I do, with Femi Mouth. That I first part, you know, she said, liquid. No, what she, I do, with fear. Mout. So he want to take set for you. I don't know. I don't want. I, 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 I don't want to know what that means. You know. No. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. I, I. I don't want to know. No, 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 no. I'm going to leave that one there alone. That, that, that one, the sound. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah, something, something that's of afraid. Something that is of afraid. No, something that is of afraid. I don't know what it is. <laughs> you know, that, Natasha Japan said, no, Raga, theme mode, not your mode. I'm sorry. Okay, 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 okay. Theme uh, mode. Not your mouth. Okay. <laughs> Blessed Saraga, I think you should leave that one alone. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the arms don't start though. That's what we do over here. We have fun. We have fun. We have fun. We have fun. 
Like we pick up yourself and everything is everything, my G. Let's go. back but what I know is it I have a conflicting thing is it A-N-E or A-I-N-E you know where me attack you know where me attack is it A-N-E or A-I-N-E yeah right? that's what me know yeah send me a little link and make me know yeah <laughs> Natasha did need a liquid no way I'm do with female. Naki be coming in to big up on myself and think. Happy be a wagwa. any from you know but um because i've actually never seen it damn spelled that weird eh, you know but um but we just want to make sure you know so never get it from the source and think big up yourself all right i'm um, could pause right yes and then and um, right away, I'm going to open the phone line and thing. I'm going to go play a no video today. But I just want to open the phone line right away. Okay. Um, put this over here, so. Uh, Dan, 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 dan. All right, before you know, well, that's a 
A quick thing more. Okay. Couple of things. Um, This is immigration, all right? Um, and if I simplify these things for you, you know. Um, immigration, all immigration regulations come under, you know, the the INA, the Immigration and Naturalization Act, that that's a law. Once a year, act it's a law, and um and there have been several amendments over the years, but um there is there are very few. You know, it, regulations are always changing in the immigration um here, or like sometimes daily, but. The law itself, the black letter law itself, you know, INA, the Immigration and Naturalization Act, it's um that's um pretty consistent and standard. And some of those changes, uh, well, you, you have to keep up with them, right? And along with the changes of you know, for quite a few years now, there's a distinction between deportation and removal you know deportation is a form of removal but you can have removal that, that is not deportation in fact you can be in a removal um, posture and you're still in the country <laughs> uh you know or you can have left the country on the removal and it's not a deportation. So I'm just speaking broadly based on some conversations we've been having, okay? The key thing is to know that while deportation is a form of removal, the way that USCI, well, the way that, um, you know, the immigration authorities in the United States use removal you can have removal that is not deportation. But deportation is a form of removal. Additionally, yes, deportation is generally worse than removal. So deportation is them literally, you know, Taking you up and you know that's something to carry you, you know incarcerate you in, in a in a in an immigration um, detention facility or you know carry you to the plane or send you back on a plane or the, that is literally deportation. You can be in removal. <laughs> there are people in removal who've been living in the United States for. Uh, I'm not getting into that, but basically they're in removal and, you know, they've been living in the United States for years upon years. And some people um, pursue their alternatives to removal or pursue um, various forms of appeal to removal. Or, you know, there's some people who have been in immigration court and were placed in removal and the judge say, you're in removal, but you're allowed to leave the court. But you're in removal. Okay? So, 
various forms of um, removal affords you various opportunities for appeal that you would not have under deportation. And I know some of this sounds con a little bit, you know, intersecting and convoluted and things like that. But I'm um, just, you know, to, you know, just, you know, just listen and, you know, just understand to whatever extent you can. Um, when you're on the removal, you, there are various appeals that you have on the removal. Now, if you overstayed over um, 180 days over when it's supposed to leave, but less than a year, you would be automatically placed in a, a three-year removal. In other words, you have to leave the country for three years And um, basically, you're banned for, for applying for a visa for three years. But I'm going to get back to that. If it's more than a year that you overstayed, you're essentially banned from applying for any visa to the United States for 10 years. However, you know, to answer some of your questions, you can appeal within the three years or you can appeal within the 10 years. And there's a, you know, a 212 appeal, a 601 appeal, and there's a certain standards there for you to, um, you have to satisfy for them basically to say, based on what you have presented, even though we're ban you for the three years, based on what you have presented, we are going to give you a waiver and allow you to come back. Well, the 212 is not allow you to come back. The 601 would be allow you to come back, but the 212 would be allow you to apply for the waiver. Don't ask me why they do it like that. But the 212, depending on what your removal is, U.S. immigration authorities, they have a provision where you have to apply to be eligible to apply <laughs> to break, you know, the three-year ban or the 10-year ban. I, this is just how they do it, okay? So depending on what your re removal posture is and what is it you and how you want to come back, like the two and two, is basically an apply, an, an application to establish eligibility for you to apply to come back before the time up for the ban. And that is, that depends, right? The 601 now is you're applying to come back directly, to break, to break the ban and come back directly, right? Um, I won't get into the details of those, but I just want you to know that there are provisions. It's not because you get the ban, it means uh, you absolutely can't come back under any circumstances. There are circumstances where you can't come back. If you're under removal and... Um, you know, there are provisions under the INA, the Immigration and Naturalization Act, for you to apply to come back, okay? So just know that. Which is different from the instances when you're flat out banned. You, you do have instances where you're banned, right? If you're, for example, if you're under removal, are you somehow figure out how you have to try to come back in? And you get catch or you success you were successful in coming back in and um somehow you end up back in that system, you get catch, you get bite or whatever. 
that's an automatic permanent ban right there. You know, so you do have um, instances where, you know, I, I still see people trying to call me directly on the um, 929 number when the show is on, and I don't know if they're calling to get on the show or what, right? So that, but no, that's different. <clears throat> so again, just to address some of the concerns that some may have, yes. Now, the threshold to apply to come back in while you're under the ban, <laughs> it's high, but it can be done. And there's a particular way for it to be done. And there's some standards that you have to fill. And um, you have to know how... You have to know how... You know, whether it goes so or it not goes so, but even if it goes so, <laughs> you have people who... They're in a perfect situation to, to, to successfully appeal, but they don't... They never do the appeal the right way. And these people are dealing with hundreds, thousands of these things every day. Them not a time for waste. This is an MCL. Okay, boom, 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 boom. So you think I have to be on point. And, and we are keep it real, though. And you have some people, them think me in a hundred in terms of whatever, but them know how to put it together. Them know what to say. And them know how to... Yeah, yeah. And them know the language. And them know what the people them are look for. And them know what to say. And then put them thing together and then get you. But it is a high standard to break a ban. Yeah. Whether the three year or the ten year. Alright. Um and, and, and the standards that they have levels to it. And we're not getting into those right now. You know, but just know that there's a provision there. <clears throat> In general. If you had a three-year ban or a ten-year ban, once the ban is finished, you're eligible to apply again for a visa. In general, there are instances where it don't say it's a flat-out permanent ban, <coughs> but it virtually is a permanent ban, even though your time up. Um, but in general, once your three year up or your ten year ban up, and it usually explicitly say, say it in the document to them send you, you can just apply. You do not have to go under two one two or six zero one to get, you know, a, a, you know, special permission to apply again or or to you know to apply that you know like as if to say you were banned. I was banned, so me have to do the six zero one. Boom! No, once your time up. You can apply again um, without um, going under 212 or 601. And I know some of this sound cryptic and thing, but I'm trust me, I'm simplifying it as best I can. But the key thing, you know, for several of you, you know, who think, you know, once you're banned. Oh, and and, and the truth is, if you're if you're banned, even if your time up. Once you apply again, you, you have to make sure so you, you think the pay your P's and the Q's. Even if, if it's even a visitor's visa you apply for, right? Because them, it's right there. You were banned for 10 years. And now you want a visitor's visa, they're going to pay close attention to you, all right? It just comes to the territory, right? So even if you're eligible to apply again, they're going to say, yeah, yeah, you did ban, we'll pay attention to you. So, it's going to be a little bit harder for you. It, it's just one of them things. Then. Because you were banned before. You know? And, um, you know, them have this thing you're like, you know, well, you disrespect the program before, so you have only for people that follow the rules and you never follow the rules, so blah, 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 blah. blah. Well, people have legitimate reasons why they do. Um, Two more final uh, little quirks in other thing that is not explicitly stated, but is definitely there. If you get a 10-year ban, 
you don't want to be in general you in general you don't want to be applying to break the bond one year after two year after three year after them generally not like that you know their thing is the ban is a punishment. <laughs> Their thing is, you deserve the punishment. Whether you think you deserve it or not, they think you deserve the punishment. So, if you know, for them it's like, do the punishment, you know, because you were wrong. But so, if you if you apply for break the ban like too quick, in a fit of mind, you don't want to do the punishment, you know, and and, and whatever. But if five, six years pass and them something there in them region there, you, you, you know, you, know so you get a little beat and thing, you get a run and in you know, them time, so them, you know, them look more favorable upon somebody who, who who do like half or more than half of the band and then, you know, I try to break the band. Um, however, <clears throat> you can apply, you know, if the circumstances in your life is such that you that some serious emergencies and there have been places where serious emergencies and whatever you know have allowed people to um, break the ban and like after um, a year or or two or whatever you know very often it involve um, children or illnesses or or um, you know you know, different emergency situations and, and you know, accompanied by <coughs> substantial evidence <coughs> that prove that the emergencies are indeed credible. And they they have, you know, to one year and two years. But in general, they don't like that, you know, so keep that in mind. Again, just be reminded, I this is the United States system. I know why it is. I learned it in law school, but I know under facially it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but um, under U.S. immigration laws, um, drug offenses are considered more serious than, um, you know, like criminal homicide or felony or criminal felony or, you know, or murder. <laughs> Don't ask me. It just in terms of what you're entitled to under U.S. immigration law. <coughs> Somebody can't commit a murder. And um, based on the murder where them commit, you know, and, and if they're deported or they're put under removal, they can apply after 10 years. Somebody can be um, committed for a drug offense and, thing, and they're banned for life. That's just how they do their things. Them have the angle, we have the blade. That's how it goes. And um, I, I, and again, I know what it is, but you don't why that is. But you don't need to know. It's something with President Nixon who went and put, you know, ganja and a dangerous drug thing back in the day and all them thing there and whatever and you know, whatever. But that is the result, you know. Um, so keep that in mind. It's just one of them thing there, you know. So for some of you, it's like. But me know somebody who do so and so and so and them get for come back and whatever. Them not supposed to can't come back. Yeah, no, it, you know, common sense to you would suggest that if you did a do a look hustling with something or whatever, you know, look at drugs or thing or whatever, and thing, and, you know, that you shouldn't suffer more in terms of punishment than somebody who killed somebody or you know, whatever. And no common sense. But that's how them things set up, right? You know, so, so don't, you know, don't think that the lawyer is not making sense. <laughs> you know, the lawyer has to follow the law. <laughs> right? Remember, you know, the person named lawyer. <laughs> but you see what the first... Um, syllable in the in the word lawyer is it's the law, <laughs> right? It's all about the law. It's all about the regulation. All right. So the lawyer has to follow that, you know. So what may make sense to you, it you know it have to make sense under the law, right? The lawyering is the application of the laws of the United States of America in this particular instance in this jurisdiction. You know, to the facts in your case, all right? I just want an empty thing, okay? But again, removal, 
deportation is a form of removal, but you have forms of removal that are not deportation. Deportation is generally seen as something way more serious than other forms of removal. Two, if you were deported or you were in under other forms of removal and you had a specific time ban, there are INA provisions for you to apply for a waiver, you know, under while you're under the ban. And that, and those can be a 212 or 601. And they're different one. And then one of them. It doesn't mean you get through. The 212, it don't mean you get through. <laughs> right? Because the 212 is you have to apply to become eligible to apply for the waiver. Again, don't ask me. That is just how them do them things. So if you get approval for the 212, it don't mean say you can't come back here now. The approval for the 212 just means say you're now able to apply for your regular visa after that. Okay, and the 601 is a whole different kettle of fish. And these 212 and, and, and 601, you know, they are taking anywhere from um, two to three years now, sometime four years, you know. Well, 18 months and thing go up and, and so forth, okay, for the 212, okay. So just keep those things in mind that... Um, a data go on this, all right? Um, if you came in the country in a way where you weren't officially recognized, to use lay terms, when you came in the country, like you never come in upon a visa and then overstay, but you come in in a way where you weren't landed, that's the term they use, you're not entitled to anything under U.S. immigration law. But asylum is not under that. Okay? When you come in under asylum, you know, you're, you are entitled to certain, um, you, you know, you can apply for certain provisions under asylum. And, and even if you were rejected under asylum, you still can apply again. And, and so forth, you know, for different types of visas and so forth, okay? But um, separate from asylum, if you come in the country, Bandulu, and basically the government never know when you come in, you know, like somebody who come in on a visa, right? you're not entitled to anything, okay? Even if you're married, <laughs> they might rough you up. All right, that is that. Okay, um, phone line open for some different things, you know, so. Uh, you know, if anybody have any more of those things, just link me and then if I observe anything that I think, you know, is worthy of some sort of, um, you know, clarification broadly. Here, then I'll do it, okay? And remember, you can contact me when the show is not on, on the 929 number, 929 All right. <clears throat> I uh, want to remind people for the get together um, this Friday that um, I need to look up my JetBlue ticket, you know, that I am not getting in on to. I want me just to uh, put out my business out there with sitting on me a flight, Pando. Um, uh, yeah, I get in the room. Uh, pa, 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 uh, what the number here, you know? Uh, 
So, I get in, oh, I get in like, um, well, four o'clock. All right, so I get in about four o'clock on Friday. So that means, I mean, technically I could be there by five o'clock. Right? So, so for those of you who've been asking, Oh, Puli, after the show, I'm sending you the information, the address and everything there. For those who have been asking, yes. So, you know, sometimes flight delay, sometimes them reach early. Oh, Chrissy, she's a JetBlue flight attendant. I hope you, I don't know. I don't know. If, you, if you're going to, um, if you're going to, if you do Orlando, if you, if you do Orlando trip on Friday, then we might buck up, you know. Um, okay, all right, so for those of you asking about time on Friday, I, am, I, I've been to Orlando 10 million times and whatever, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not familiar with the area like that, you know, but, uh, they said, where are we going? Where the, um, dog bite and those people? Okay, somebody just offered to pick me up from the airport. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So good. Yes, I will have. I will definitely. Um. Yeah, but as somebody from the ants, this you know, people. This is serious. Oh, Chrissy says she'll be in Nassau, Bahamas. Oh, Chrissy, I wanted you to be on my flight to be my flight attendant. But anyway, um. See there, she said, would I get royal treatment? Sure. Anyway. Yeah, so somebody just have to pick me up from the airport, you know, which I welcome. But it's somebody from the from the Anstess crew. I don't. I don't know, you know. Is that safe? Is that even safe? Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, chicken box, it sounds suspect. Yeah, don't it, Miji? It sounds suspect. Yeah, I mean, I know, you know, you remember Rag always telling you, know, you see the thing where you need the most and the thing where you enjoy. Be careful how you accept it from anybody. You hear me always that I tell you that. Yeah. All right. You see me say, Raga, we're a tracker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're a tracker. Don't it, Simone? I don't wrong you. We're a tracker, yes. Because so that people can Yeah, that's a good idea. May I put a tracker for me? I like when I have an iPhone, something there, or whatever, and thing like that, you know? You know, when you go to a certain place, you tell a relative them where you're there, and you give them, like, you know, update time, update, say, yeah, me I pass so and so, and whatever. You say anything look suspicious and thing. You can't. You know, what I probably should have done. Take the ride, you know. Take the ride, and then when we in there, just go up on a live, you know. So that people swim in there and say, yo, me live, you know, me in a them car, me in a them car, me in a them car, and I drive me and thing, and whatever, and. Me I say other cars, yes, we just pass a Mickey D's. And if it a drive too long, you know, you'd start saying, me no know any of the car, them say the place supposed to be near to the airport and we had drive about half one an hour. And a beer bush we start, see, uh, you know them look away there? Eh? Yes, Simone, yeah. If you make sure, say, me stay safe and thing, you know, because it's it true them no? Is it true them no say, but cooking I got turn up, you know, and them career I got done. Then me just want to short circuit the thing and Tanya Harding me, you know. Yeah, then me want Tanya Harding me. You remember with Tanya Harding? You remember with Tanya Harding, though? Yeah. 
the ice skater, the ice dance skater, competitor, you know what she do? What the woman name where she go, go take board and beat and, and beat her up on her foot or whatever. Yeah. Maxim never go live in her car. Cause they make a Tanya Harding, me, you know? For try to get rid of me out of the thing and whatever and ray, ray, ray. But yeah, I'm going to take that drive. I'm going to take... All right, so people, I'm going to take that ride from the airport. I'm telling her from now. I'm reaching about, about 4 o'clock. Orlando Airport. Somebody from the Ants Nest crew going to give me a ride. Nancy Kerrigan, she's the same one, Sham. Sham, you hear me a ball out from now. I'm going to take a ride. One of them will give me a ride from the airport. Yeah? Yeah. So, I just want to know if by 5 o'clock I don't reach a place yet, send out an APB. Call the police, the FBI, the CIA. No, CIA don't have domestic jurisdiction. But you probably have to call the CIA because they will come and send me to our next country and all these things and whatever. I don't put nothing past them. I don't put nothing past them. I don't put nothing past them. Okay, all right. I don't put nothing past them, but me go, you know, me go, you know, probably the the, the drive and you know, welfare check them sitting there, yeah. I'm kind of up the phone, pan live and I whisper to them to say, yeah, we are past right. I like if me I go to a little tunnel and thing, you know, my car, me just make one know. Me I go to one tunnel now. If you see one next little suspicious car. And then pull up again to our next car and I tell me, so go over another car, leave that car and go in another car. I'm going to run. I'm going to run. Anyhow, them, any oh, them like pull up next to one car and say, um, you have to come out of that car and go in another one. The other one, you have to carry go down to the house. People may tell you from now, I'm not going in the next car. I'm going to act like I'm going in the next car. I'm going to bolt and cut. You see me, because we're going to fall in this. You know, I come switch the car upon me and all them things there. After people don't see me at the airport, I go in another car there. And they have camera going and look at a remote car. car. Well, look at a remote location and I go switch me and I tell myself to go in our next car. Right. Yes, Java, you're damn right. I put it Interpol. <laughs> yeah, Interpol, I make mean, them do. It's a global search. Rock a missing. Last scene with two old crosses hands. You understand? And we don't know where him there. Yeah. Lloyd Clark at the first lion, Mr. Freda hands. You can't turn the boat at the first lion, Mr. Freda hands. When them hands are gang up on you, trying to know the lion have a careful and thing. Yeah. There is danger in numbers and unity here. You have to be careful with them and I remember them and I look at them, them look at answer where we are chat about, you know, them careless, you know, but they still can't buy it. You understand? And they are schemers. These particular answer we are talking about, they're schemers. You know, I say yes to them telling us say a boss, Anthony say, a group of fish we go for and a group of fish we go for. You know, so me it's a conversation out about group of fish and thing because we're gonna reveal that. It's conversation out there about how to count the group of fish and what. No, I admit it's I say it, you know. It's I come out and say it. But this and that or whatever, me I kind of talk out there about which fish tastes better than group of fish and all these things and whatever. And they, on a can't beat Raga Shanti, that may I tell you. Okay. Let me see what I'm going in the chat right you now. Yeah. Don't forget you have a duty to do that pedicure. Oh, yeah, I forgot to bring stuff for that, no? You know what I am I never buy up things them for that. Amazon must have a little kit as. <laughs> Amazon must have a pedicure kit or something, you know? You know, yeah. But that's a different competition, you know? Remember, say, that I with Mango, you know, a Mango, a Team Raga, right? And Dog Bite, uh, uh, you know, Dog Bite, not in a Hansness crew. You understand? So, you know, we have to see what's going on right now. It's a pretty punch me now, look for you, you know, with your yellow water. All right? Everything is everything. Why people may tell us that the people them still are going bad down in Jamaica? They amount a gun down in Jamaica now. No, no, um, the man them rap one, 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 um, 
You see that Western Union or uh, one of them, Cambio, one of them Cambio, they are Ochi. And kill the security guard and shut up some people. All picnic get, me and say, all picnic get shot too, you know. Right, I see the video, I see somebody I run out with a picnic, but I don't know if the picnic get shot or whatever, but me and I say, all picnic too and whatever. You have to be careful with them, something about the reports, you know, particularly when it come from the street and thing and all them, something there. Well, in truth, no time me hear things from the street we don't even get report and and it really happened and from the street me get it or uh, it will report and then when you get the account from the street you hear the fullness of what really go down and them look or something there, you know but a place I run away and the robber thing and the money thing and whatever it's like once them have gone them just feel so that's an opportunity to get money but nothing I go on down there when I report no people are getting robbed, nothing are going on, we don't have a report, you know. And the rate at which people are missing at Jamaica, it's crazy. And enough of them missing people, eh? it not count as murder, you know, because you don't have any proof of them dead, but every year the 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 the, the, the missing, you know. People at Jamaica is just ridiculously high. And uh, let, me, let me just Google something simple and then. How many people were missing in Jamaica? 20, make twenty twenty. When they have 2023 ready, I already make a word. I'm missing. How many people go missing in Jamaica a year? Despite the efforts and surveillance system implemented by the Jamaica Constabulary Force, at least 1,000 people go missing annually. <laughs> That's crazy. That is just crazy. People are... No. A lot of doors... Well, not a lot, but some of those are people who disappear voluntarily. They want to disappear. And um, and it tend to be a high number of women who go missing. And it tend to be young women. And nobody can tell me, say, some form of trafficking now going to Jamaica over all of the years, them. And indeed, we have had instances where some of those women have gotten away. You know, the whole thing, man, promised them this and that and whatever, and then they're missing. Promised them work and this and money and this and whatever. And these men who do these things, you know, they've been doing it for decades and they have a system in place. And them always, you know, one of the common strategies with them is a good-looking, a really good-looking, cute, hot boy with all of the appendages of success and thing whatever for dazzle up um young women eyes and whatever always smooth and move for chat a woman and get them in a position and whatever and then kidnap them and carry them go and them and go and um unfortunately um subject them to um some form of sex slavery in some part of the world or whatever and, and have them in a lock them up in a some place where you know just imagine how harrowing and horrific that must be for those women. So of the missing, it's always a high number of women. <laughs> now some of those women, you know, they, they're running away from, you know, they choose to go missing because they are running from some craziness, you know, they don't want to deal with or whatever and thing like that. But um, the numbers are way too high, you know, to just, you know, to just dismiss that and say that, you know, 
those missing people are, you know, they're voluntarily missing, you know, and and the fact that it's mostly women, and, and when I say mostly, you know, I'm not talk like fifty one percent. It's like eighty odd percent. It's always up on them region. Eighty odd percent, uh, ninety odd. One time it was years ago. It was at ninety something percent women, female missing. And uh, well, I don't know, I something. Is this a chart right here? Oh, see, we have a little chart right here. My question. Um, missing people in Jamaica by year 2018. 2,200 missing. But them say 1,837 return. And 289 outstanding. So almost 300 them no know about. Okay, so we need to look at these return numbers. Uh, no, this is off. This thing here. Oh, okay. That, so 2021,000. 1,467 missing. 751 return. 689. So for 2021. According to the 689 people, let me know them there. That's a high number, people, you know. And, and I remember, you know, with these things, this is just what is reported. Most of these the people live in fear, people know what are going on. And unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of people who are outside of the radar of, um, you know, these, uh, report, these mechanisms, uh, you know, for reporting and so forth, you know. There's a lot that happened in Jamaica that is not officially reported and and hence not officially documented in these reports and things like that. But um but there's a lot going on there, you know. And you have to be careful. But at the same time, Jamaica was just celebrated by um Uh, Jamaica was just celebrated by this like premier international travel organization as the number one vacation spot in the world. That is good and bad, you know. You know, it's bad in that, you know, it's vacation spot, you know, it's uh the, you know, it's a service economy that um You know, that, you know, them so them provide employment and this and that and whatever. But, um, for example, that service economy, number one vacation for tourism, most of the hotels in Jamaica, most of the profit made from tourism don't stay in Jamaica. It's like some 70 to 80 percent of all of the money we make. Uh, 80 something percent at one point we're making a Jamaica actually leave and go to the home country of the hotel that's there so you know these um them boats in the hotel where you sit under the international hotel them and whatever um their profits don't stay in Jamaica you know they 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 leave and they go elsewhere and they you know, ninety eight percent of the people in their executive positions they are they come from their country <laughs> and them come Jamaica come work. So it's not Jamaicans. You know, you have a few Jamaican right? so but uh, Jamaicans do the waitressing jobs them and the um no Kev, I mean yes a forty percent stay that that high according to unless it changed since this year and uh, sitting sitting but um you know I mean, and this is nothing new. It, to be fair, it is nothing. It's the same thing in other countries, you know. 
you know, you have these international um, hospitality conglomerates who run hotels and whatever. And I mean, even here in the U.S., you know, you have um, certain hotels with their headquarters elsewhere. And see. But, of course, the United States is a very different economic position than Jamaica is in and whatever. So, so, you, so you have that side, that troublesome side, that negative side. But then it's also a good thing. It means that some people are doing, and we can't just focus on the negative, no? It means that some pe people are doing some good things there because um, the, the tourist industry and the, the vacation market, it's, it's very competitive, you know? It's very, very competitive. I think, and so hence we have this kind of, this, this continued <laughs> um, contradiction in Jamaica where it's a mixture of good and bad, you know? So it, it, Jamaica has this, you know, this, Terrible reputation for crime and criminality and 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 violent violent crime, and at the same time we're excelling, you know, in terms of on the national and the international stage. That that is no, that is no small accomplishment, you know, and to the extent that we criticize governments and things like that, you know, I I remain very very concerned with the present government with the whole thing about the integrity commission. And that we have a leader of the country where who has appointed his wife in a position that can sink the integrity commission report that allegedly has something to say about him in it. That is troubling. That is very, very troubling. But at the same time, um, to the extent that you know the government has been doing some things that have made Jamaica excel, you know, to the point where they are internationally recognize and that this is no small feat people this is no smaller company this is huge you know for jamaica to be beating out the um the seychelles and the uh, the maldives and the and these name brand vacation um places all over the world and look at jamaica whap them clot and whatever that is incredible and, you know, if we're going to blame the government for the negatives, we need to blame the government for the positives, right? So we can only say so congratulations then to the Andrew Onis led government for this accomplishment and also to the Minister of Tourism, um, Ed Bartlett, for, um, you know, copying this award and, and uh, copying this recognition. And, and, um, and to the extent that it can redound well for the country, we should be, we should be pleased. You know, that um, remember, you know, it's easier to just notice a negative and harder to acknowledge a positive and to celebrate it and things like that. So we need to be balanced in our approach, in our critique and our analyses of um, the respective parties in, as they function in their, in their respective um, roles and portfolios and be fair as much as we can. And in this instance, we want to commend them, commend the Jamaican um, Galena and things. Kev says a 2019 Gleaner report stated that 40.8 cents of every dollar stays in Jamaica. Okay, so that's from 2019. All right, that's uh, yeah, five years ago. So we see I go whatever. I we don't know what it is now or anything like that. But, but you know, Chrissy, what are, what is your opinion about what's happening in Haiti? Um, the Prime Minister of Haiti is currently in Jamaica. Boy, I tell you that Haiti situation there is, um, you know, the continued turmoil there and thing like that. And uh, um, that, that that's a multi level thing, you know, in terms of what France did to Haiti is just awful and, and the chain reaction that um, went after that and some of you, you know, you're too young to know about pa Papa Doc Duvalier who ran the country for a long time and then his son Baby Doc Duvalier and um, the ensuing corruption there and you know, the games that imperial and colonial powers play you know that just serve to destroy haiti you know incl including the united states you know, france so you know was a colonial power for how long and then the united states invaded it and was there for you know for a while and raped the country and thing like that and 
you know, the United States has been accused of continually keeping Haiti where it is for certain reasons that serve their interests and things like that and whatever. It's just awful, but um, we see where lawlessness has um, arose you know, and increased. And um, we have instances where gangsters just running out of two million prisoners and free hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of prisoners and things like that. And, and there was this proposal that um, the United States military came up. I don't even know what was going on there. But they went all the way to African countries, particularly Kenya, and were making them was to give them money to leave Kenya and to go down to Haiti, go to um, to go to try and restore law and order there. This after the UN was there for how long, and then that was a debacle. This is the United Nations, and them find out say the United Nations. Um, peacekeeping forces they don't they are breed up the Asian young girl them left right and center and um, pass on all kind of disease to them do they brought you know because the United Nations um peacekeeping forces are international you know and thing but very organized and thing like that but for some reason them just feel like say when them they are 80 it was just like you know them can do as them like and you know that was awful you know and in, uh, um, so the Haitians now they have absolutely no trust for the United Nations um, you know peacekeeping forces so there was some effort to get African peacekeeping forces to go down there uh, that didn't go over too well it was almost a done deal until this and that came in cause a debacle and thing like that, and yet again, now we see where our prime minister, <laughs> who have a serious crime problem in Jamaica, now he's um, I I noticed Mister Wonis, you know, he has this thing where to me, it, it, he seems to always be looking for an opportunity to to flex on the global stage, you know. And um, I don't know, he just seemed to come over submissive to the... I'm choosing my words carefully here because I noticed some things recently that I might mean it one way, but people go and interpret it one way. I say I fight against specific groups of people, which I'm not. I'm just saying that um, remember when the whole co you know when the whole thing did I go down with COVID and and when the whole world did I say yeah you know Trump what do I do you know whatever this and that. Our government was like, ah, we're cool with Trump, <laughs> and um, it could that could be strategic, you know. That could be like, yo, let's just be cool with whoever is in the government, you know. So, um, and then after Queen Elizabeth died, um. You know that whole thing when the prime minister went over there and he was all the way he approached King Charles and the way he, he yeah. I don't know I I was I was a little bit uncomfortable to it to see my prime minister my being Jamaican prime minister being so compliant and subdued in front of um, the head of the, the monarchy in Britain that has been responsible for so much, you know. That is bad in our country, you know. And then there are some other things, some most recent where, you know, the you know, the Prime Minister seemed to 
you know, whoever run things, you know, oh, yeah, you're cool. If I yeah, run things, yeah, you're cool. Again, that could possibly not be personal. Um, one could make an argument that his approach thus far has resulted in in pluses for us. For example, U.S. governments have found it necessary to put on a heavy hand on some people in terms of, um, you know, like visa allotments and so forth and things like that. And, and they have been pretty cool with Jamaica. You know? <laughs> they have been, I'm choosing my words carefully, but um, at times when the government, even the Trump government, when the Trump government decides so we're going to move to certain people and whatever and, and start treating them certain way, they were like, no, no, Jamaica cool. No, I'm serious. <laughs> you know, they, they were like, Jamaica cool. No, no, Jamaican, man, I'm cool. Um, this, you know, uh, I'm a, may I do that show you right now? I'm going to show it after, yeah? Mm. Yeah. So, they were like, um, you know, there have been times when them are pep up at a country and I remember I did a couple, about two or three times, the Trump government was like, nah, nah, nah. And people, that is not by accident. You know, they leave Jamaica alone. They were like, Jamaica cool, man. They leave Jamaica alone. And again, we have to be fair and balanced. So, perhaps the Prime Minister has a strategy where it's like, listen, there's a reality out there to acknowledge in terms of, you know, how we compare against other countries in terms of um, resources we have and what kind of political weight we have. And there is a particular strategic dance that we have to do to ensure that Jamaica is always, that gets the best treatment possible. Now, I am uncomfortable with some of the things that the Prime Minister do. But it is arguable that the Prime Minister and others who are on his team would probably look on somebody like me and say, you can't go and chat. You're just an armchair critic. You even know how we're going. Our goal is for win a business who don't like who out there. We are going to juggle our thing in our way where anybody out there more likely to look on Jamaica in a good light and treat Jamaicans in a good light. That is what we're up against. And this is how we go about and do it. And if that is their strategy... Say what you want to say about the Prime Minister and whatever, but in terms of results, in how the major players treat Jamaica, based on what the Prime Minister has been doing, these major players have not found it necessary to target Jamaica explicitly. In general, something got on what year? We make them, the U.S. government, them do a this little thing. Them, they like to keep certain developing countries or post-colonial countries in a dependent state on certain aspects of their economy. Jamaica is dependent on the United States and, and Canada and all these countries for the tourist economy. So they love when you're in a service economy and them love when you, um, you borrow from the World Bank and the IMF because the World Bank and the IMF is, con is con controlled by the United States and and these other um, 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 so-called first world um, entities and whatever. So what they do, they tell you what to invest in. They tell you how to spend your money and this, like that. So they like to play that game. And um, I lost my train of thought there just now. And um, But it, just to say that the prime minister um, has been, you know, the way he has been conducting his government and foreign policy and thing. Something happened recently when you hear them come out and issue the warning about Jamaica. They might advise um, tourists, you know, not to travel to Jamaica because of um, what they claim is the health. You know, them, you, them always bring up the crime problem, right? Uh, it was very interesting to me that um, they also brought up the... Um, they included health thing now. They said that basically if Jamaica's health 
care system is so inadequate that it's not a good idea to travel there. That's the argument they're made and they issue this advice. I wouldn't be surprised if some of that has to do with, um, I don't know if some of you know, but Bahamas was included. So it was Jamaica and the Bahamas, right? There are entities in the Bahamas that have been very, very unfriendly to um, LGBT, uh, go, LGBTQ, as I go, to um, elements of the gay agenda, right? So they have been very, very um, on, you know, Bahamas, are, there, there's some elements there they have been very outspoken against it. Uganda in Africa, and, and I think Tanzania, and, they have been very outspoken against um, efforts to liberalize um, different forms of homosexuality. And, and they have even been stronger, you know, in terms of laws, you know, where they say if you are engaging um, homosexuality or whatever, this and that will happen to you. The United States government and others have taken steps to punish those countries. And, um, and very often, in order not to come over like a big bully, they, they do these little things and they, by saying, Oh, you know, we we're, we're going to retract, you know, USA, the USAID, um, such and such, and or we're going to make Uganda is not doing well with this and that, so we're not advising anybody to travel Uganda. So they come up with these things to impact the economy <coughs> and and to impact loan servicing to these countries. So you know, the United States do that and. Bahamas has been very outspoken with this thing. Jamaica still has a buggery law, you know, that basically says homosexuality is illegal under the laws of the country. And breach of that law, you would be subjected to certain punishment. Is this enforced in Jamaica? It's not. <laughs> are there loud, are there sections of the Jamaican government toward whatever that that in my opinion no but this present government is not going there because you know they're not going to follow the united states because you know that is political suicide in jamaica <laughs> if you do that you're going to lose the election so but they, you know so the law is there, but it's not really enforced. But them not come out and load up. Bahamas are load up the thing and whatever and thing like that. And um, the Andrew Onis government has not made any substantial move to say, okay, we're going to remove the buggery law. So some people are saying, Adata Guan, you know, the United States government is punishing Jamaica. And of course, you all remember the big scandal with the um, the flag. On the, on the U.S. Embassy. And there was some misunderstanding there. Well, I mean, on the part of Jamaican people because they, do, do, they didn't seem to understand that the way embassies work, embassies pursuant to international law, every embassy is an extension of the country for which it represents. So the Russian embassy in the U.S. is Russia. You're in Russia once you're on the embassy. The U.S. embassy in, in, in Russia, once you're on the embassy, you're in America. Once you're on the U.S. embassy, you're in the United States of America. If you get married in that embassy, you got married in the United States of America. Right, that is how embassies work. So, on embassies, you can do what you want in your own country. <laughs> so, the U.S. embassy in Jamaica is the United States. So, the United States can do what they want on their things. If they want to raise a gay flag on their thing or whatever, but um, so that's fundamentally what it is. Um, 
there are kind of little shenanigans that go around it and things like that and whatever and you know but um, a country can expel certain people from an embassy so them can't lock them up and arrest them or whatever you know but them can't say you have to leave but if you do that, the other country will expel somebody from here. You see, whatever. So they have this balancing thing that goes on there. But it was an issue. Because Jamaica and them did rule out. And I said, yeah, what kind of gear flag thing that you don't have up here and whatever. And, and then, they, you know, pursuant to State Department policy, the U.S. government kind of never made the public utterances about it and thing. Because that is their policy. Don't, when seeing the other country, them just chill. Do what you have to do, but do it surreptitiously, do it clandestinely, do it indirectly and whatever, but don't do nothing direct if once you're in the other country and whatever. So, so people are saying that that would, you know, that move that the US government make and issue these things to, you know, these um warning for Jamaica and Bahamas. Them I said some people are arguing, so that's what the issue there. And that really are going, them are punishment. Because that's how them usually punish you for something else, you know. Uh, but outside of that, though, you know, the um, the Andrew Onis led government has enjoyed a very good relationship with these power brokers on the international stage. And arguably that has bode well for Jamaica and Jamaicans, you know, in some ways. I mean, it does not bode well in terms of and in my opinion, anything substantial, you know, we have not gotten any substantial benefit for, for these things and whatever. But at least, you know, we're not targets. We're not in their crosshairs. And they're not coming after us in this way and things like that. But, um, you know, we're, we're living in um, some interesting times right now in terms of what is referred to as uh, culture wars and, and the politics of sexuality. And, and and good old political economy, you know, you know, all kinds of stuff happening now. You know, Donald Trump has opened a Pandora, many a Pandora's box with a lot of these things and whatever. So things are kind of crazy out there right now, you know. And um, you know, I guess our government is navigating it as best they can, you know, given that they are not major players with a big stick out there. You know, as the saying goes, when elephants fight, ants die. You know, so the ants, them can't get in an elephant fight, but the ants must be careful where they walk, you know, because when the elephant, them kick up, them don't really care about ants. So those elephants are fight elephant, the big giant, them are fight big giant, and the little ants, them, and who they in the dirt, the elephant, them don't even see them. So it is it is um, incumbent on the ants then to watch what go on when elephants are fight and I know uh, get in an argument with none of the elephant them because they're my elephant and your ants. You understand? So you have to chill, you know? And so it is too, you know, give it that uh, like somebody like me, an elephant right you know. You know, the ants they screw for them for you know, them for just mind themselves, you know, and keep at them out and and clutch and just watch themselves and thing in a cause when big elephant like like myself, yeah, roll through and thing and whatever. Yo, ants this we get crushed round here. That we I tell you don't <laughs> don't Yeah. So you know, for watch themselves and think see you know me always mixing up the serious with the with the goofy, you know? Yeah, work with me. But yeah, that is what's going on. It, that is some of what is going on with, um, you know, the government and some of the issues that they're dealing with out there. And missing people and all these things and whatever. And, uh, Sean so she just worried for her sister and family because her side in Haiti is locked off. Yeah, it's really bad over in Haiti. Um, whoa, I didn't know that. 
and Tasha that was and still is a huge disgrace on the part of the United Nations. Yeah, it was terrible. It was terrible, you know, what the United Nations and how loose they were in Haiti and what the consequences were for young girls and boys. Yep. There was um, apparently um, all kinds of abuse on young boys. I mean, I tell you, say, you, know, you know, poverty is a crime. You know, poverty is the you know like not that it's a crime to be poor, but you know what I mean. It's like people just take advantage of you. You know. Oh, you're right. Haiti does it well. Uh, doesn't have a, a PM. Yeah, there was a president, and um, um, he has um, resigned, and um, there's stuff going on over there. You know, uh, calligraphy. You don't miss a chance to mention the next dance this <laughs> Um, Empress Daniel, are you saying that Milo will crush the ANC? What Maxine said, Empress, there is no team called Milo, thanks. Now look where they start again. No, no, she's not talking about the team, she's talking about the elephant. Remember the caller called it and talked about Milo, the elephant, and how the woman a bad man because she like, Milo, the elephant from Thailand. And thing like that. So, you know, when I mentioned elephant, that's where she was coming from. <laughs> when like, you say, well, no, easy, you know. Hello, Hello Wagwan. Uh, what happened there? Okay, let's try this again. Hello? 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 Would the person answer? Would the person did a call? Hello? Uh, I don't know where I'm going. This. All right, four line what me know people who are calling, but what I want calling, but I can see where I'm going. Anything on the one call. And please, on a calling now. And do run in and a call in when me a go away. Yes, about three, four, five call a come in when me a leave. Which is one have a tendency if you do. Alright, so who want call? Call now. Or we can have a short show today. And we have a we can have a sh you know a longer show tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday on the eve of the destruction of um, the Ansley's crew on Friday. We can't have the Oh, and um, people, Ghana trip September. Remember, if you are one of the people who you bought your ticket separately, right? Because remember, a lot of you, you're not flying from New York, so you bought your ticket separately, which is how the thing set up, right? But remember, if you bought your ticket separately, you have until the end of next month to give the deposit that you have to give in for me to know that you're actually going on the trip. And remember, your deposit is different from the deposit that I approved people from before. Right? So again... One, if you bought your ticket separately and you're coming on the Ghana Learncation, you need to let me know because I'm, I'm going to have to cut off the amount of people, you know, based on what is going on now. I, 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 this thing may go to a number that is it's going to be difficult to manage. I can manage any number, but it's going to be a little bit difficult to manage. So... I'm I, I'm working with a local cut off now, and thing. But I now, uh, some people have spoken to me and said that you you can't know this yet, and you so you people have spoken to me. Don't worry, you're safe. 
right? So you people who have spoken to me that based on all your work thing set up, you're now going to know if so and so until so and so. You safe. Um, you you no worry, boo boo. Remember, I say you don't talk to me, and thing or whatever. So that's it. But remember the way I set up my thing and the way I have to make payments to you know certain entities to lock in certain things and whatever. I have to know by the end of next month. Everybody who's going for sure. And if you tell me, say you're going, but you have a putting a deposit and thing, I'm, I, I'll listen to you and I'll be like, okay, cool, whatever. But based on my list, what me have, you're not on the list, <laughs> right? And it's just, just to be sure. So you have people who are, you know, who <clears throat> will be flying from New York and they put in their deposit, right? And them lock for their position. And they don't, and they happen to lock the position at the cheapest rate. Um, that is it. So we're just being fair. And then anybody who after that, you have to go by the rate that is there now. Because I have to go by the airline. And if the airline change them rate, then thing, I, I just have to go with them. Okay. And um, I don't want... You know, you can tell me that you buy a ticket, you know. And you can't show me a ticket. But remember, you buy your ticket by yourself. <laughs> you know, and I, you know, I, I, you know, you can have ways to get back that or to use back that ticket or whatever and still don't go on the trip. I know, I still don't have a way. So, so for those of you who are saying, but my show is, I'm going to buy my ticket. No, but you didn't send any money to me to say this is my deposit for the trip, separate from the ticket or whatever, which is it's outlined there on the website. Or if you talk to me, I should, you know, me explain it to you. So I hope you understand because I have to protect myself so that I am not left, you know, paying for a spot that somebody don't turn up on for whatever reason. And it don't mean that you're going to do it deliberately. Anything can happen. But, you know, we're talking, you know, significant sums here. So I, I, I don't want to be left with that. So that is why I'm managing it. So the only way I can know if you're definitely going on the Ghana Learn is if you, you pay for your ticket or if you pay for your spot or if you pay <coughs> the, the, the particular... Um, amount that you're required to pay, you know, at each deadline. Okay? I just want to be clear on that. Because I see, you know, a couple of people know, may I come on? No, 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 no. I, I, I'm on a site work, people. This is a, you know, we're going to another continent, you know? <laughs> yeah, I understand. And they're, you know, me, I'm managing the process, you know, in terms of the different things and whatever that I have to pay for. And, you know, when I tell somebody, say, no, you have to hold this for this amount of people. And then they say, how much? And I'm like, I don't know yet. How oh, we can't do that, Mr. Stewart? Um, but uh, how much you think you're going to need? Da -da 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 -da. Um, we can't do that, Mr. Stewart. You you have to, um, if you're going to do that, we're gonna need a deposit of so and so. That is what I'm doing on on the on 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 the back end for different things, you know. And I understand them; they're running a business. But but so so because they're running a business, I have to be running a business too. So we have to be professional and disciplined and structured with this. Okay. So again, remember, it's the end of April. Is the first deadline for me to know basically i'm going to use that and say okay these are the people confirmed at the end of april so when remember i'm going to ghana the first week of may and i do it deliberately that way so at the end of april boom ghana ghana the first you know because when i'm going over there well me know who i come me know who i come on the trip I may have hard numbers and, and things when I work with them, I talk to the people and move over there to make sure it's everything solid and whatever. You understand? Me know who I got room with who. Me know who so and so and so. Me know who wanted and I go over there to deal with that. Alright? 
So it cannot be, it cannot be that you tell me. Then me never tell you. So why you never say nothing? Well, me start saying to people, but if you just come to me and say, Raga, me are going on. Me definitely, me say, me, me are going to say, okay, good, 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 yeah, come, good. But then, if you come to me, you know, and say, oh, they may never tell you, say, me I go. So you hold my spot. And I'm like, no. So, but then, but me tell you, say, me I go. But yeah, you tell me, say, I go, but that's it. But you never, you know what you have to do for all your spot, you know? So, why me can't just tell you, say, me show you, say, me buy the ticket, why me can't just say, no, you can't do that because anything can happen and you can change your mind with whether you buy your ticket with or whatever you buy your ticket with. Right? Me not going to pay for your spot and thing or whatever. And then um, if you not go, me have got to enter. But no, you told us this number and, and we went with that and we got the deposit. And we told you we're not going to refund the deposit for the spot. You know, you basically paid for the spot. Right? So I hope you understand why I go on this, all right? You know, so it's fine if you tell me, man, go man. <laughs> so, yeah, man, I'm glad you come and whatever. Business we are run, right? So by the end of April, you, if you bought your one ticket, you know what you have to pay different. And yes, that is different from the people who bought their plane ticket. The one them who fly directly from New York. So don't put yourself in a position with them. It's a two different thing, okay? We just want to be clear. I don't want to confuse people, right? Some of you may think, so why never simplify? No, no, it has to go that way. We have a chart. We have a flight from New York that I organize, and there are people who are going on that flight. And that way, be the jiggy flight, right? Come <laughs> We're going to have fun and travel together, right? right. The, the, the trip... The Ghana location start from the airport, from we meet at the airport, from we meet at the airport, the fun start, okay? But we understand, like a lot, you know, my thing global, my thing broader, whatever, so people are flying from all over, right? And then it's more economical for you guys and more, way more convenient for you to book your respective flight from where you're coming from. Additionally, there are people who are going on the New York flight, right? But them just buying them ticket. <laughs> Remember, you know, the only real benefit for go through with the um by buying the ticket through me is that you get to pay for it over time. It's still the same fear where you'd appear if you buy it yourself. Let me be clear about that. The only real benefit with buying your ticket through me if you're flying from New York is that you get to basically pay for it over time. But if you have your money and you can't buy it right now, <laughs> I, it's the same thing. I, I don't make money off that. I, there's no money to be made off the flight. I, I hope I made that clear. So, me, me happy if you just buy your ticket. Talk about the full commitment that you're coming on the trip. Yup, you bought your ticket. Even if you don't buy it through me. So again, so for some of you who you know of people who are coming, flying from New York on the flight, and yeah, I said this and that and that, they bought their ticket <laughs> full. Then pay for them ticket full. Right? And then the people who basically, you know, give their deposit and lock their spot and whatever, they got that at the cheaper rate. So not because them have fly from New York and you have fly from New York, you, you're in the same, but you're not, right? You have people who got the cheaper rate by giving in their deposit way early. And there are people who make sacrifices in them respective lives and things to make sure, whatever, right? So they're a priority because them come in early, right? So you have those people. Then you have the people who just bought the ticket. They're coming on the same flight from New York, you know, but they don't need to, you know, we don't have to go into them business and put them in an awkward position or whatever. Right? Them just buy them ticket. Great. <laughs> you know, <laughs> me not have to deal with the ticket part, them just pay for the rest of the trip. Okay? And remember, the 
what you are paying for to fly from New York to Ghana can be more. In fact, it's more than the ticket from somebody who will fly someplace else far, far, far and I connect on that same flight to Ghana. That's an airline thing. That has nothing to do with me. Right? I've a long time some of that with airline. For those of you who just understand them things. I know, <laughs> I know it doesn't make sense to you, like, but them are come from far, so oh, for them ticket cheaper, and them are connect on the same plane, and we are go the same place, and for them ticket, that's an airline thing. I know, I don't know nothing about that, but all I know, it's based on demand, and all kinds of stuff, and you know, availability of flight from the outbound airport, and all these things, and whatever this and. That. But again, for some of you who think that has something to do with me and it don't make sense and whatever, it has nothing to do with me. Talk to people who fly a lot and then we tell you a long time something of that. Right? Right? You have people, again, like me explained to you before, you have people that left from point A and them going to point C. Right? They might left from point A and they're going to point B. Right? So if somebody is leaving from point A and going to point B and the ticket will be $100, right? We'll just have make up something, right? The ticket will be $100. No, say the ticket will be $200. From point A to point B, the ticket is two. And me, I get confused with it. Too, right? The ticket is $200. Those people will see that the same flight I fly from point A to point B and then from point B to point C. But if they book the ticket from point A to point C, it's $100. So them really have a point B, you know. But if they book the ticket from point A to point B, it's $200. But if they book the ticket from point A to point C, it's $100. So what these people do, them book the ticket from point A to point C, and them know them not go point C, you know. But them pay one hundred dollar, and instead of paying the two hundred dollar ticket to point B, when the plane stop at point B, them come off the the airline. Them hate it. Them have a name for it. You know, they remind me what they. Them have a name for it. They hate it. And airlines have banned the passengers from flying on them plane again if they ever do them something, right? But again, the airline have them system and them do them one thing or whatever. So, for those of you, again, who, but me talk to so and so and or that she appear and or whatever, this and that. Again, I am not making any money off of the airline. So, one of the things that I make money off. <laughs> me not make no money off of the airline, them. Me, me just to do what them say. And I me keep telling them, whatever you. You come from uh, whatever you want. Even if you want me to book your ticket through my travel agency, I'll do it. But you see what I've been doing with it? I said, look, look, look on it. And you tell me what you see and me will book it for you. Because whatever you see the airline, I put adapt me, I go book, adapt me, I go put it in the car. I'm not to forget to have it or whatever. All right? So even if it doesn't make sense to you, before you come at me or you come for me, just look on it, look on it and you see. Whatever it's it, wherever you see when you go on them website and think that is the same money I go and put in and pay for you. Alright? Um oh, hello Carla. Wait, what are you going good as? <laughs> Hi Raga. What's up, boo boo? <laughs> nothing, nothing. I'm just calling because I just signed on and I hear you talking about something that I live by. So you know it because I'm in the transportation industry. Right, right. Whenever I gotta yeah, fly yeah. back, yeah. it's called skip lagging. So okay, skip I live lagging. here in Atlanta. That is it. That is it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I live here in Atlanta. Yeah. And say I am flying from California. Uh -huh. Say I'm flying. Okay, like I'm gonna be flying from Sacramento. Um, there's a flight going to Fort Lauderdale that stops here in Atlanta, but. The ticket is $128, right? But if I just wanted to write out, buy a ticket to Atlanta, I'm paying four, five, six hundred dollars Oh, my God. 
So what I do, I just pack my carry-on and my personal item, depending on the airline. So majority of the time, I fly the Atlanta hub. I don't want to call them here. But I fly the, the Atlanta hub, and I can carry a full-size carry-on and my personal item for free. And because I have platinum status, I don't get the main cabin three where, you know, they say this is a full flight and at the end we're going to be asking 30 people to check their bags and whatever to the final destination. It catch me one time. One time I'm coming from California uh -huh. and I was sitting there in the airport doing some business and did not realize that my flight was boarding. And by the time I jump up and realize they were boarding, they were already checking bags. And I'm like, my status don't even save me at this point because they don't have anywhere to put my bag. So I had to check my bag to New York. So I had to fly all the way to New York to go get that bag <laughs> and fly back. <laughs> Please get so, back your bag. You get back your bag. Yes. Yes. It's well, hold a on, hold trick on, hold on, hold to on, hold it. Hold on, hold on. So if you're flying from Sacramento, California, to the West Coast, to Fort Lauderdale, is you know, mm -hmm. it, and, it, and it's stopping in Atlanta first, right? It's a yes, hundred and twenty-eight yes. dollar. But yes. if you bought the ticket from Sacramento to um 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 Atlanta, it's like call a five hundred dollar, uh -huh. five six hundred dollar. Yes. yes, that's yes. crazy. So the smart thing to do with skip lagging, and you know, saying so I'm the luggage that check road is to buy the ticket right. from Sacramento. To Fort Lauderdale, but when the plane stop at Atlanta, it does come off for one hundred and twenty. It does come off and go me out. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. Every day, all day long. <laughs> and now I'm getting, I'm getting even smart with it. When I go to Jamaica, I only buy one way tickets going to Jamaica, and you know you have to have certain things in place to do that, right? So right, right. I buy the one way ticket with probably the Atlanta hub. And then coming back, I don't check a bag. I just carry my personal item and come off because the ticket sometimes is like $60, $70 coming from Montego Bay. So, but us come off when we reach Atlanta and come out. No, well on, well on, well on. So, <laughs> wait, well on. so when they say you buy a one-way ticket, a one-way ticket from where? From where? A one-way ticket from Atlanta to Jamaica, yeah. and then I buy a one-way ticket with another airline, which might be a few dollars from Montego Bay back to Atlanta. No, but what's the but if that flight is what, going? What, why, why, why a one-way ticket? I, I know because, something that I learn on my side, but I, I think what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. What, what's the advantage with the one way ticket? Because there have been instances, you know, where the one way ticket can even be more than a return ticket, you know, you know that too, right? Yes, but for Which the I most part. I don't understand part, either, but you explain, yeah. For the most part, I shop the skip lag fair, and then it shows me who has a reasonable flight going to Jamaica. So, I'll be willing to say I'll pay $200 to go to Jamaica because when I go, I carry bag, pan, kitchen sink, everything. So I need that flight going to Jamaica. But coming back, I can get a flight for less than $100 coming back. And I don't have to carry anything coming back so from on, Jamaica. Hold on, hold on. The benefit is in the return flight, you're saying? Cheaper? The cheaper. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that is interesting. Yes. That is interesting. Wait, are you yeah, saying so. is it this particular airline with this particular hub don't call a name or are you no. saying in general a one-way ticket from jamaica back to the u.s is cheaper than a one-way ticket no there? it's not it's not it's not the the atlanta hub is the one what what am i the dog is that dog or a bird no it's a little animal what's that that animal on the on on them plane the green one that one so the last time I went, the the flight was going to Minneapolis. Wait, well, you said the green one. But it stopped one, here. The green one. Yes, yes. The, yeah. <laughs> the green, which green? The green, the green duck. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not that duck. Is they have they have a little animal 
on their thing and that's what they use as their their no, their little slang soon, not forget wait me somebody soon put a uh, me I try if you card uh, usually somebody will post and then let me know how it do uh, anyway. I can tell you in a second here. Uh, I'll tell you in a minute here. But yeah, that's 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 how I do it because I mean the airline makes so much money off of people with oh I don't understand. I purchase a flight and you're gonna turn around and try to charge me for a, a seat. So what did I pay for? You you what? What will you just say? When you purchase a flight, you know certain airlines you purchase a flight and then they're gonna tell you, Oh, purchase a seat. Oh yes, yes, no, that is what they're doing. Yeah, so, that is what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, so when yeah. women did buy, women buy so come stand up at the door and I find somewhere put me. I'm not buying no I I Sorry. let me tell you with that. <laughs> there, there's two things with that that is just such a turn. Nowadays people when they say the price for a flight uh, you know, it's only in Europe this used to do, you know, with the Ryanair and them thing there, you know. Uh, them they might do it long time, you know. But again, people, when you when you're going to purchase a flight, two things you must know. For uh, people who fly only know this already, so there's some redundancy here. There are two things you must know. Whatever you see, them put for said that at the flight is almost a guarantee, say it's for a seat where you don't want. It's oh. almost a guarantee it's a seat where you don't want. So the airlines are in this thing now where them price the flight, which in sales is called a lead, them catch you. And then once you go in there now, if you pick your seat, you only see certain seats available for where you just pay for. Right. And where you pay for, almost all, like I, I can't fly, I can't fly between people. It must be a terrible, terrible emergency or whatever. I can't fly between people. I mean, I'll just go bonkers, right? So I uh -huh. want an aisle seat. Enough time if I'm at the back of the plane, I'm cool or whatever. I don't like being beside the bathroom though. Like the bathroom. No, bathroom me neither. Yeah, and it's a flush the whole time back of me and thing like that. I can't manage them something there or whatever. So invariably I always end up a pick my seat. But once you pick your seat, you know, people, depending on your airline, it's like 40, 50, 60. Hundred and dollar, two hundred dollar for your for your seat. This is after you're done after you're done with name there, you know, see the, the, the price of the flight, you know. Depending uh -huh. on the seat where you pick or whatever, it can be at two hundred dollar, you know, two hundred and dollar, you know, hundred and dollar. You know. I, I booked some flight yeah. recently. Um, and I knew what I was getting into, obviously. But I booked some flight east recently and the seat them and you know, you know, you know what I'm doing too? If you fly uh -huh. to panic, you know. You have to pay for your extra seat for each flight. And the other plane, you know. yeah. yeah. You have to do that. Yeah. Too. So you end up, yeah. you end up, you end up with all, uh, you, you can end up with a ticket for say six, seven, eight hundred dollar, but I pay hundred and eight dollar for each seat. For two flight for go and two flight for come, so you, 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 yep. you end up being like a thousand yep. dollar, right? And then you might have to pay for bag, and then want to pay for early access. Hello, I have your credit card. That gives me that benefit. <laughs> right. So you have that element there with the seat. And then you have a next thing now where them play these games with you. It's like, you know, if you want a ticket refundable, you have to pay more. If you want this and that, it's all kind of games them play. So them always like, yeah. eat, you up, eat you up, eat you up for more, whatever. And it's, it, it's terrible. Well on, well on. Yeah. Well on, Missy people, I said Frontier and Coyote. I want to. The dash. Huh? Happy nice. <laughs> no, you have to tell me how we're nice. Because I told Missy here, so you have to tell me how we're talking. Yes, man. Yeah. The, my mama said the hold green on, hold one. Hold on, hold on. Of the two I just mentioned, is it the former or the latter? The former. Okay, the former. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Them teeth bad. So that same airline, let me let me educate the public on something that happened to me. I'm from a learned must say, okay, I got you all now. Okay. That same airline does not have a customer service where you can call into. You know what I said? No for we love for Google, but where Google to find customer service for a particular airline. Uh, wait, wait, and you get second, the number. Wait, one second, one second, one second.
What's up? Good. What's up? Where's Zion? Cause it seems like he wasn't. I was calling him. I came home today. I was calling him, but he wouldn't answer all along. Bro, probably he's not by his phone. Huh? When it's about to be bedtime, he usually calls. What? He usually calls. Yes, Why but what you and your brother need to realize is that it is normal to call somebody and not get them. When he calls you and he doesn't get you, then he calls me and he's like, where, where is KJ? Where is KJ? I don't know what to... You call him, you don't get him. Then you call me, where is Zion? Right? You don't even call me to tell me, I am hello. You, you call me, I ask for Zion. Him call me, I ask for you. Right? Dude, it is totally normal to call someone and not get them. And you have to wait till another time to get them. Do you understand that? Yes. Huh? Yes. Yes, who? Okay, you good? Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm about to finish the show and then I'll call you back, all right? Okay. Hey, 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 take your finger, don't bite your nail, all right? All right, cool. Bye-bye. Bye. They are so adorable. <laughs> them me and whatever. But if them call one, if, we, if them call one and them not get one, them, yeah, where is KJ? Where is Zion? May I call him and I get him. You get, 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 get. Yeah. Hey, I them yeah. some instant gratification in them, man. <laughs> yeah, man. That's so, what life teach them. Eh? No, no. That's what life teach them. Everything is supposed to be instant these days. No, is it? Yeah, is it? Is the era where them born and growing? You know. Yes. Right. Yes. Era where them born. You know, so I tell them, pick me what day. I tell them, so no. <laughs> <laughs> talk to them. I may mean, tell them about writing a letter, I'm mailing the letter. They might look for me like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, funny enough, you say that. Yeah. Two weeks ago, I got a letter from my granddaughter. And I'm like, why did you mail me a letter and you're coming here? It was a lesson they were doing in school. Oh, it's like... Yeah, well, she, we, we, yeah we, we, I thought we, that we, was we, commendable. We, that was like... <laughs> That lesson was like a blast from the past. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, she well, had well, to well, write can you and them? tell me. This is what our ancestors did. <laughs> they wrote on a paper <laughs> and put it in a yeah. thing called an envelope and put a stamp and you mail it. Yeah. And that it would take like a week or two to get there. Yeah. Yes. That is what yes. they, our ancestors <laughs> did. <laughs> She probably, she probably said to her, her teacher, I could video call my grandma right now and tell her everything I'm doing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'd be a video yeah, call and video call. Yes, Daddy, don't yeah, you see? I'm, I'm sending video call. Join, join, join. I'm like, can I talk to you on the phone? <laughs> no, I want to see you. I want to see you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so see, back to that particular see, see, airline, airline now. No, no customer service. They don't have any customer service, but when you Google, you do find a telephone number and you get the same people them with that accent, them people there, uh -huh. and you swear up and down that you're talking to the airline and they are so polite and everything. And they listen to you, and you you bother you tell them, oh, I I I'm sick and I can't make. Okay, well we're gonna we're gonna change the flight, but it's gonna cost you ninety nine dollars, mind you. You already paid seventy nine dollars for the flight, so that means you're not have no money to get back. You know, sir. The other day it happened to me that I said I'm not going to call them. I'm gonna go into the airport and talk to the people. And I told the lady my experience why I chose not to call. She said, that is not our customer service. We don't have a customer service. If you ever have a problem, you come to us and we'll help you. Wow. Yo. So these people teeth in your money. <laughs> so your, your, your one thing is that, given what they're doing, nothing wrong if you, do what you need for do for go around them too. Hello, yeah. all, all day long, rather, all five dollars and sixty cents. I cut my black behind up in first class. Five dollars and sixty cents. 
five dollars and sixty cents. Five dollars and sixty cents. I am flying first class. Hold yes, on, hold sir. On, hold on. That's I using did. your points. That's just using your points, right? Yes. Oh, okay, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So everybody gonna get the people them credit card. We can't call them name, but it works for me. If I owe you, you better make sure say you have Zell or something, because I love to get my points because I fly for a living. The drive, then we need to fly back home. Right. So I got to get my points. So the airline them beat too bad. So we got to beat them back. All right, Muma. Will it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not have bad news. I'm not going to make it. Oh, you're not going to make it for this weekend. No, I'm going to make it. Okay. No, okay. no, it's not okay. It is not okay. My sad, bad. I wanted to come because. I want to say all I want to go down, all I who can cook for who can cook and then I don't to throw in my little thing. <laughs> right, right. No, but um, what, what, what happened, I would, I, would, I would make sure that I, I, you know, like I video when my hands are raised in triumph and things okay. and, and whatever and I will, um, and I'll send that to you and I will okay. also video when, um, you know, CBS and Tasha, and them um, a world on them head in defeat. You know, <laughs> I'm going to video that for you. And thing, yes, and, um, please. I mean, and, and I will send that over to you. Okay? And I will send that yes, over please. To you, uh, yes, please. You, know, you, 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 you need to see when time the whoppings go down and then you know, uh, man. And the weeping and the wailing. The weeping yeah, well, but it won't well, chase the Victor food. Well, yeah, you, you, um, well, you're not going to get the taste. That part, yeah, 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 no, 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 that is a plan, you know, a different part and whatever. But what I'm, what yes. I want, no, but what I want people to know that get together, this um, get together being on an Airbnb, I'm not opposed to doing it again, you know, but um, uh, you know, we have to see because it, this was Sharm's idea, which I thought was a good idea, and it is turning out great. Um, it is, but, yeah, but the idea was to just come into a city and you know. Four, five, six, seven yes. years. We just sit on and we have dinner. We go on lounge or something. Or we go somewhere. Yes, that yes, is, that's yes. the idea. That's the idea. That's the idea. So yes, yes. They, they get to they get together. We didn't intend it to be this big, you know. A sham. So we can do it so and so, someplace central with people from different different. Aww. And it come and then you know I got the the Airbnb and all this stuff. We love you and we love your company and anything where you put your hand to a support. Blessings, man. But Chucky, so your yes. thing, I saw your thing said for a long time, doing you know, Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, Raga. Yes, yeah, okay. Man. All right, CFT. All right. Yeah, All right. Protection. Thank you. Take care. Bye, time comers. I'm Smash Pro. I'm going to hold it down. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> on a tech time, wait, wait. On a tech time with Team Raga. On a tech time, let me fix it. Let me fix it before I get beat. Good, 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 good. I would say I share hacks. We share it. Well, you were sharing all these hacks with me. I was looking at you going good. I'm just right at the end. Right at the end, you pull a Del Marine. Right at the end, you pull a Del Marine. No, Chokisha, them, 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 need, them, need, them need to take time with Team Raga. Them are going no, too much. No, Chokisha, <laughs> me can't believe you pull a Del Marine and thing and swing. No, they're not draw me in. I'm not going in the hands now. Team wait, wait, Raga, wait, 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 and wait, wait, I'm wait, wait, recruiting. Wait, wait. Say that again. Say that again. Say that again. I am, I am Team Raga, All and right. I am recruiting. That's right, that's right. I you know, man, nobody look a kill this kettle red boot catch you. If you come over no, here, you know, you're not frightened for boot. You're not frightened for boot like some skettle no, from California. No, 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 no. boot can't no. catch you around here. No boot no, cannot no. catch you around here. You're not stranger to no, boot. No, no. Been there, it's done that. The whole work. I've been there, done that. Brap, yep. brap, brap, brap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, yeah.
hold it down. Take care. Yeah, bye bye. Bye. Yo, Z, what you know, for a moment, dear, me just think, say, you know, like she da go swing over and swing over there and thing and whatever. But me know Chokisha for a long time. Chokisha no frightened, you know, for a free cheap boot like Del Marine and thing and whatever, right? Chokisha no frightened for nobody again and a nickname and I call her Fabi, right? <laughs> People. At that Del Marine name in the ants group, you know, in the ants nest group, you know, she a Fabi. Yeah, Fab Swap, you know. And him say Fabi and him put it right there upon her induction. You understand? Del Del Fabi. Yeah. Del Del Fabi. Fabi Del Del. Fabi Del Del in the ants nest crew over there sort of thing and whatever, you know. Run gun over there for get red boot. I know she not get the boot yet and thing. I bet you didn't get her the boot. I bet you them not get the boot or she go in that crew for go get that thing, eh? Watch and see. Watch and see. Anyway, people, I'm not stay along today in the cars. You know, I'm going come late and thing. And, um, uh, hold on there. Okay. Um, Okay, meeting tomorrow morning. Meeting tomorrow morning. To confirm that, you understand? Juggling, you know? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, no, somebody asked me about this. I know that I'm going to sound whatever, but um, I'm about telling the truth. I actually didn't know about this airline, um, this um, um, frontier airline. I, 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 I guess you have, um, you know, I. How do you explain this? In the travel world, even even online with um Expedia and and, and, and and Travelocity and them and whatever, what they do, they work out contracts with certain airlines to have them on their platform. And Expedia is a giant now, you know, because Expedia has actually gobbled up other entities and um, not only gobbled up, but Expedia has done what uh, a thing in business is like. If you have a brand in business, what them do is they make a next brand like for them thing, you know. So them start something else like the brand where them have. So if, I, if I'm from them start something and it's successful, one of the business thing where companies do out there is to start another company. Different brand, different everything, but basically I do the same thing, you know. And what it does is it discourages new competitors. Because new competitors are going to look and say, well, I'm not going to go in that business here because that one you're in there already and that one you're there already and that one. And I know it's the same person who won the two of them or the three of them. You know? And people do that them corner the market. So Expedia done that, you know, when them just come out and thing. And um and even when they didn't do that, them them take over other entities like Expedia own hotels dot com and, and 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 others and whatever. But whatever airline is presented there, right? They made a, a deal with that airline for say, all right, we have a booking for you and we get this percentage when we do booking for you and whatever they think. But some hotels and some airlines, they don't do that. Or if they do, they only do it for certain routes, but they don't do it for other routes. So if I say some airlines, you have to go directly to their website in order for book them. But those are airlines where them things set away where it's not economically, no, no economic sense to them go with an Expedia, whatever, based on the demographic where them do or, or the resources where them have or Whatever the case may be. A lot of airlines do, though. 
I call it the Amazon principle, right? Where at first companies did not want to go and advertise their product to sell their product on Amazon because Amazon take well, like 30 something percent of them profit or even 40% of them profit. So their thing was it didn't make sense. But then, but then a lot of companies do it because Amazon is so powerful and so far reaching that if they might sell something for $100, And if them sell it on them own website for hundred dollar, and them get the full hundred dollar, but if them sell it on Amazon, them only I get sixty dollar. However, if them sell it on them own website, when them I get a hundred dollar for each product, them I go sell ten. I know the time when them sell ten. Me just use basic numbers to give for me. In at the time when them sell 10 for the $100 each, them end up with $1,000. But in at the time when them sell 10 for $100 each, if them did dip on Amazon, I sell it for $100 to you know, but Amazon I take 40 Them I go sell 100 So when them sell 100 at $60, them end up with $6,000. As a, at the same time when they would have sell ten at a hundred dollar, I end up with one thousand dollar. So then that is just the power of Amazon, and it's a, it's a similar thing with the airlines, you know, when them go up on Expedia and, and all these things and whatever. But I mean, the percentage is uh, is small and thing like that. And then there is branding too, and there's shoppers out there, you know. They use Amazon, Amazon to legitimize things. And that's the thing they know, you know. There are shoppers, there are people who buy. And if them say them want to buy something, and if them go on Amazon and them don't see it, them get suspicious. Like, you know, they on Amazon. I mean, I don't know if, <laughs> but yeah, you have some people that saw them juggling, man. Like, if the thing that they on Amazon, like, is it legit? Type of thing. But of course, that doesn't apply to um exclusive design and some exclusive designer made thing where the exclusivity element of their thing that is what gives them value you know so it works in the reverse so you have people who buy certain products where if them see it by amazon they don't want it they're like no if it's on amazon that's not in my class right you know you you know you know in fashion what i'm call it hot couture or whatever but I remember the first time I came up on that concept, I was speaking to a man who at the time was valued at like two hundred and forty odd million dollars and thing, you know, rich Bill Berkeley. I was at the board of trustees and thing. Bill Clinton and I am come in and it was this Nuremberg celebration and this Nuremberg trial thing and the then president Bill Clinton had come to the University of Connecticut and we were there. So there was this big hurrah. And there was this the usual parade of um the iconography that um depicts, you know, that you know, that you know, sends a statement about where you are, your position in life. And uh, it was on that day that I was just seeing some vehicles that I was just like, what the hell? I, them vehicle exists and whatever. And I remember talking to Bill Burke, and I'm like, so I saw this Mercedes at the time. That time G Wagon was at a thing. And I saw a G Wagon at the time. Mercedes, for those of you who don't know, Mercedes Benz G Wagon. And I saw a G Wagon at the time, and it was it was weird. It was red and silver, and it was just so beautiful and whatever. And I was just like, Bill, look at that Benz. That's what people in your league um, drive, huh? And I will never forget it. Bill said, young man, Kingsley, no, 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 no. The thing with people in my league is if it's advertised, we don't want it. <laughs> and I was like, and I just thought about that. And I was like, if it's advertised, you know, you have a certain league of people, like, you know, in a film circle. If you're wearing something that is advertised, 
you know, it's like, you're not real. You don't belong here. <laughs> yeah, we are somewhere advertised, but we don't wear stuff that's advertised. You, know? you don't say a Pagani car or a Lamborghini car advertised on TV. You don't say them thing there, you know. If it's advertised, you no know one. And think about life. Think about life. So there's a place for mass production and common things. Supermarket mentality. Buy everything and just make the profit small and the more you sell, the more money you make. The Amazoning thing, you know? But, you know, there's another element there of exclusivity, you know? The rare, the more the thing rare, the more value it have. So you have to find where your sweet spot is. If I over yes or over yes or, or in yes or whatever and thing like that. But, um, if you can have a product where, you know, the value of that product, you know, is such that whether it's, it's leaning to the exclusivity side or whether it's leaning to the bargain side, where you know you're going to sell enough, that is a legitimate side too. You you must know what your product is. Is it something where you want to sell enough of it? Or is it something where you want to sell a smaller amount at a higher value, knowing that people will see the value in it and pay more for it. You need to know what you're doing. And it's not only in product, it's in service. I am thinking of having a sort of... um. Concierge um, travel arrangement, something where you know, if two or three people want to go someplace, but them don't want nobody to know, send them a go. But you know, that they want, they say, okay, we want you to to bring us there, but we want we don't want nobody to know, and we want we want this there and that there and whatever. If I were to do something like that, which would be fun, by the way. But then again, you have that exclusivity um, element there. It would cost more, and you'd have to put things in there that increases that exclusivity where, you know, boom. As opposed to, say, if you have a trip and, and there is um, nothing particular about it, there's nothing private about it or whatever, but you know, so 300 a week ago because we're just going to Cancun. <laughs> You know, and then that's different because everybody's going to Cancun. So we have uh, 50, 100 people going to Cancun. That's different as opposed to if, um, say, you have a client where discretion is paramount, you know, discretion. You know, they don't want nobody know them thing or whatever. It's organized this thing for whatever. You know, you have businesses like that. You know, whether it is financial advising, whether it is selling chicken, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You have, uh, you know, for those of you running business, that's what I'm sharing with you, you know. You have you always have to be thinking about what is your good or service, you know, and what is its value. And when you determine its value, make sure that you answer your why carefully right why is it why should it be valued at this you know why you know and then you may have to go to this side for make a profit or to do for your business to excel or you may have to go over to this side or you may be in the middle right here you know in terms of balancing and thing but you have to know you know in terms and of course the exclusivity element has to be tempered with demand right okay Ah, and see, um, CRD, who is with Peckwood Farms, says, Raga, Amazon makes more off my book than I do. <laughs> but the exposure adds credibility to the book. Name recognition, exactly. Right? That's an instance where you have to um, understand what you do. Antarsha, I 
totally agree with you. Budget Airlines seems like a headache. But yeah, people who love them. You could never get me on Spirit Airlines. Ne I did it once. That was it. Never again. And Southwest is better, but I did that once too. And I had to do that line thing that... <laughs> And I can't manage it. I can't manage it. I can't manage it. I don't do Spirit. I don't do Southwest. But it's not a prestige thing or a class thing or a bossy thing. It's, um, I'm really into comfort. You know, I'm really into comfort. And I love luxury. But not, you know, them people who want a hundred, a mansion with a hundred rooms. It's like, it loses its practicality. I have well I have a friend, you know, in um you know, well to do fam, very you know, old school Italian rich family and things like that. And I and they took me to one of their houses, which was a massive um house in Florence. Was it in Florence? It's either Florence or what the other one name? I forgot that it's either Florence or Tuscany, one of them. But they took me to this massive old sand thing or whatever, and um, and they were on one side of the mansion when they're there. Okay, it's huge, you know, these old school European, you know, beautiful architecture type of thing. You know, just you know, this massive lawn, well manicured, and you, you're coming up the driveway. You see these things in movies, right? And you're coming up the driveway, and then this imposing structure just there, you know, in all its historical glory. And you could see that this architecture is just from some era, like three, 400 years ago, and meticulous detail, and just like, wow, you know? And you get in there, and whatever, and we're talking, and I was like, this house, and and whatever. And when I was talking to him, and uh, uh, so we were talking about regional issues, and you know, his family was a mixture of um, Napoli and Sicily, you know, and that they don't get along. <laughs> you know, you remember I tell you about this family where. Italians are really into cooking and um and the seasoning is very particular. They're like us in that sense. And and there's this these regional issues that go way back in history. Like if you're Nap Napoli, you don't use Sicilian seasoning and whatever whatever. So when you're talking about that and it and it segue into houses and thing and him just telling about the old money and you know, I tell him about some other things too. I mean you don't know him, but you know, which part I'm family and you must say like, you know, Western society and them don't understand the mafia and da, 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 the mafia was part of life and I don't know. And I saw him I tell me all oh, them come to get rich and the house and whatever and and then he was just like Yeah, but this is for sure. And I'm like and he said, No, because when we're here, we're just on this side. And he said, we don't even really go in at the middle. He said, like, one and two times if them keep it like a ball event, but them keep it at one another mansion. But he said, if them keep it at one, then they may have a, like a little party in the big. And I would never ask him, like, so you don't go on that side? <laughs> big mansion. And I would never get the man say, no, I'm... We haven't been over there for years, and I doubt my mom and dad has ever been over there for decades. People, you can't imagine you have several houses, but then one of your houses is so big that, you know, when you come there, you don't step on the side there, you know? So you, you don't want nothing, but yeah, people are take care of it and I clean it or whatever, you know? But you, you know, you, you have a house where. Like three quarters of the house, you've never been over there for decades. I don't judge people, but you know, because I've learned not to. Sidebar. You know, remember when we did that grow up, we have one pair of shoes, uh, we have two pair of shoes, like we're regular shoes, like we're judging shoes, and we're going out shoes at them. So. I remember when we see people with wooly pa shoes and wooly pa clothes and things. And we said them wastefully. 
And them wasteful so and whatever who I wanted now and look how them wasteful and would do it and whatever this and that. You know I said enough of uno who are listening to me and I watch me right and who used to stay so uno, uno do the same thing we used to observe right now. Yep. No found a whole heap of shoes on the down wear. No found a whole heap of clothes on the down wear. <laughs> As a woman buy shoes and say, this is not to wear me. I have to wait till I get an outfit for wear the shoes. And they never get an outfit for wear the shoes. And the shoes is there. And it's like, no, I can't wear that. I don't have an outfit. Yeah, you're living in a different space than you grew up in. You're doing it. You're doing the very same thing you used to observe. I do. I remember I was in Jamaica. I'm telling you this already. My helper, Miss Merle. Miss Merle just pulled me aside and said, Miss Mr. Kingsley, that's what she called. Miss Kingsley, I need to talk to you. And she said, How long now may I wash for you? And I was just like, Years, holy for years. And she's like, You have a holy for clothes, Miss Kingsley. So I was like, Yeah. But she said, Every time I come here, it's the same set of clothes, my wash. You don't wear most of your clothes, so why you have them there? And I felt so guilty. Yeah, I felt so good because she was so right. And I didn't mean it. You just end up going in a little space where you end up doing these things. And and um, somebody may look for you and I judge you or whatever. And I know, so you never really set out for deliberately do it, you know. But just like how oh, you, you know, never, you know, when you never did there, so, and somebody there, what well, you did there, and never see you and I judge you or whatever. So I don't judge rich people. You know, I don't judge wealthy people who do these things. It's a whole different way of existing. It's their normal, you know. And um, but I just don't see the practicality of just like you have a house with a hundred rooms and you, 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 you would, and you don't use them. Like why? But in their world, you know, the representation is important. It establishes credibility for them and, you know, um, for different things that they do, you know, for, like I was telling you, like Michael Leachin in Jamaica and, you know, giving this speech and telling when he just started out and, and he wanted to go into um, financial consulting, financial advising, basically investing people's money. And, um, and him, I say him never depend on nothing. He was in debt and broke and them something there. And, and, and the first money him get, him go buy a high-end Benz. And I remember this young lady, you know, was just like, wow, you know, for somebody who manage money and thing to, you know, to be so broke and not have money, whatever this, and then go put yourself in debt, you know, to buy a brand new Mercedes in a top of the line Mercedes. She was just like, don't you think you were irresponsible and thing? And then he was just like, no. He was like, if I'm going to invest your money and I'm coming to you to invest your money and I come in a broken down cheap car, would you give me your money to invest? And she was like, thought about it. She's like, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> So it depends, you know. It depends what you do. Of course, a lot of people they f they play the game not for a calculated, um, enterprising, um, you know, benefit, but just a class benefit, you know, to say you're legitimately of that space. But again, people do it and do it well. Donald Trump did it for a long time and was able to get loans without being subjected to, um, you know, the due process that the average person was. It, it was. He understood that he had a brand where he could go into a bank and get a loan because of the brand. But that brand involved him parading with um, his airline and, and you know, and engaging in all those excesses in Trump Tower and putting all those gold rails and gold things, which to me is just gaudy, tacky, and just like, 
it's just, just no sophistication to it. It's just like nuberish, never see come see and whatever. But he's just playing that game, you know. I'm, what I'm saying to me, it was just transparent that he's just very transparent that he's not what he says he is, you know. And and I remain befuddled as to why so many people are fooled by him. I can understand being fooled by a clever person who, you know, traffic in those symbols in creative ways that they come over so convincing. But to me, he is so, it's just so obvious that his, his exaggeration and <laughs> just the language he uses, it's not even, it's not even elegant, you know, it's... Um, you know, I think it's just really simple. I have done more for nuns than anybody else I've done for nuns. Oh, I don't know. What we really need is somebody to do something for pastors. Pastors, I have done more for pastors than anybody else that ever do the past. Pastors, I'll get churches for pastors. He's just really simple and does obvious and things. But it worked for him. It worked for him, and um, um, of course, he, uh, he's coming from under the umbrella of his father, who was legitimately, you know, successful in real estate and whatever. So he was coming out of that legacy. But the point I'm making is that there are people in in certain circles who use these symbols creatively in order to establish credibility and legitimacy in certain spaces that allow them to secure certain benefits in those spaces and thing, you know. So, and I know a lot of wealthy people do that. Mark, you know, I, I know a lot of wealthy people who don't do that either. <laughs> you see that lady that donated $1 billion to a med school and in the Bronx? I said she's donating it to the school. She was a teacher there. $1 billion and said she just won whoever is admitted there to go school free. It was a billionaire and she never carried herself with those things or whatever, but have our proper, proper money. Billionaire. So remember, you know, whatever much money she have, you know, she can give her a, a billion dollars. <laughs> you understand? And she don't live in a big old dirty mansion and so whatever this and that. So you do have people who are rich and like, like, you know, as the elite would say, fabulously rich. And they just don't feel the need to get a hundred room mansion or something like that or whatever, you know. Um, I know a professor too was at NYU, he and his wife. When they died, they left like a hundred and something million dollars to the school. And they were like, where did this money come from? And them living in a look little tattoo. <laughs> and they were happy. Happy, 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 happy. But they, you know, he had invested in the stock market and he just met the money stay there. And for those of you familiar with the compounding interest thing or whatever, and this is just shut up. And, but never change him lifestyle. So you do have that side. And thing. But just in general, though, for those of you in business, just, you know, as you, as you, as you balance some of these factors and thing, keep them in mind. And then, um, but just, it's important that they know the value of your product. And of course, it follows. You need to know the value of yourself, you know. And once you know the value of yourself, remember, it's not everybody going to know that value. And people have all kinds of issues out there, some racial, some gender, some this and that and whatever, some regional, some national, some based on religious structures and so forth. There are all these factors that people are trafficking that's going to play a role in what value they put on you. But in terms of your product and your service and you, you make sure you know your value. And just know that you will come upon people who will not know your value. And when they do, you go back to what we were talking about yesterday. <clears throat> Boundaries. If somebody don't know your value, my suggestion is, it depends on what space you're in, but in general, in general, 
don't waste your time trying to convince somebody of your value, you know. Again, this doesn't apply in all situations, but I'm just saying in general, if you have to spend time for somebody to see your value, worse if the way they see you is far from what you know you are, usually it's not worth it. And and even if you get them to come around, I find that those people, the slightest chance they get to retrogress back to how they saw you, they will go there. When I got my doctorate and I went to Jamaica, there was this brouhaha. Oh my God, this youth, you know, it was home. I said, somebody say, if I remember Olivia Boy's home. Yes, I remember Olivia Boy's home. I was in Boy's home in Jamaica. I was in jails in Jamaica. I was living in the streets for years and all this stuff and whatever. And thing and whatever. And go through it, you know, sleep in a gully and thing. A hustle and thing and whatever. And really. well, when I got my PhD and I go back, you know, and there were some of my relatives who, you know, they got caught up with it, you know. But someone to ask if I come, why you don't go this? Why you don't do this? Why you don't do that? And I had to sit them down. I said, Mr. Yes, you know, yes, you know, yes, you know, yes, you know. He said, yes, you know, a lot of excitement there, yes, you know, and I said, try, you know, the cultural context is still Jamaica. It's still Jamaica. Ragashanti is the flavor of the month right now. But let me tell you something. The minute a dollar missing, I made it in the room. Try to know who first them are going to jump and, and, and blame. Here yeah? is me. And failure on my part to understand that will have me in a position where me I kiss them ass or I try to prove and I leave this thing that I'm not and whatever, a minute upon or something. Like right? So even though they're acting like my value has changed, I was explaining to my brother Willie at the time. I said, those same people, the minute they get an opportunity to retrogress to how they saw me before, I know what I was before in the street, a hustle and thing or whatever, they're going to jump on it. And don't be fooled with that, you know? Right? And so it is that in some instances, I get my value is recognized more outside of my native cultural setting than it is in my in my in my in my um in my own you know and it's nothing exclusive to me the mother saying like um something like a great man is never recognizing his own country. something like so you know you don't know what i'm saying they like something or the other which is It's true to a significant degree, right? You remember when people don't know you seen Bolt's accomplishment, right? And then I don't know what you know you see and you know, and the celebration and the prayers and everybody are ray and whatever you see and buy him house and this and that and whatever. And I remember. Sean Paul's wife, Jinx, she come out and she says something about you seeing and the nice way my make over there and thing and whatever and this and that about them community and him coming in at the community and, and whatever. And she just, she said these awful things about you seeing, you know. She probably got some talking to because she never went there after that. But there was a backlash upon her. And thing and that um I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised she said that. I remember she was talking to someone and she was just like, Oh, and we went to you uh, um so and so and um you know we had Dolce and Gabbana to come over exclusively and to and I and, and, and I watch and, and Because people who are off the space they don't 
really people who used to money and wealth and whatever, they, they don't brag like that, you know. In fact, when you go around them and you start behaving the way that them shut down and draw away from you, you know, them, them not stay so. So when people go and say whatever, it's just like, when somebody of you announce that they're this and they're that, then you know they're really not this or that. So, so when she did go up and you see and all them something and I talk about the nice or whatever. And people, I grew up around wealthy families in Jamaica. I wasn't wealthy, but once I went to Calabar and then I started in certain circles, I was exposed to certain. Let me tell you something, man. Uptown kids, they party a lot, them party loud, and them love them look a car, them fast and fierce. There was this thing for a race over Port Royal and them kind of these convoys and whatever. But they're just known for being, you know, you know, uproarious and 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 party and drink and smoke. And that what young people do, you know. This is what young people do, right? This is nothing new. This is going to Jamaica a long time with brown skin people and Jamaican white people and what we call red skin people and and you know and all these things or whatever. Long time them something they are going right, and it wasn't an issue about those people being butu or those people you know them when you say she call him butu there wasn't no issue you know for them that is what those young people do you know but when you saying did it it was an immediate opportunity you now to start referring to him with these disparaging discriminatory terms and these awful type of racist well this type of thing where like you know, reduce him to to, to to attempt to reduce him that see them really are not you know I'm not know for be ever and I'm not know for this like the terminology used, right? Of course there are parallels all across the world, you know. A white man will go kill fifty odd people in, in Las Vegas and whatever. You don't hear white people saying send him back to Europe. They need to go back to Europe. They're so uncivilized and whatever. And thing like that, right? You know you know, Governor Gavin Newsom of um, California and um, some other people have so accurately pointed out that, um, you know, nine out of the top ten most violent states for gun killings are red states. Red states, you know, Republican-led red states, you know, nine out of the top ten. It's even more, right name than when you go up in in and increase the number too. It's, it's even more. But if you hear these people talk, you would think it's only black people in California kill one another. And that's the worst of the worst and this that. So that game is played, you know, uh, um, all over. But I understand that you have to know your value. You have to know your value and just know so people have their issues out there. They have their interests out there. They have their insecurities out there. They have their things that they are pursuing and it is in different people's interest to see you in different ways because it works for them. Particularly people who, my term, I love to identify people that once they're talking, I call them the I am because you are people. <laughs> right? That's just my look of thing, right? You have some people, they're always talking about other people in a certain way. But what they're doing, they're saying something about themselves. So anytime your people jump for insult somebody or an attack somebody or whatever, and they're really trying to sell themselves. So they're saying, so, so they're not coming out with the I am, you know, but by coming up with because you are, they are, you are, they are, you are, they're really sending a message that I am, Right? So anybody who used to have this need, where you know everybody have their opinion about this and that and that, but anybody who used to sing on that and whatever, particularly people who love to insult people, right? You know, Mr. Man, the Ringy, you see every little thing him just cuss and him insult and him thing is just to destroy people who love to fight and thing. They generally can't reason. People who resort to violence a lot, they're generally unintelligent, right? In general. In general, right? So that is how they exert their power. That is how they establish dominance. And that is how they define success. You know, if I 
shut you down and whatever they say that it's irrelevant you know who i am because i have the power the brute force and thing like that and, and, but they're always selling themselves you understand right so anybody who have to do that you know so they're not legitimate like that or they, they see something out there that um them don't know how to deal with it and because they don't know how to deal with it it requires intelligence it requires certain abilities it requires certain capacity so because them don't know how to deal with it then just destroy it and it becomes irrelevant and if they destroy it then who has the power now i do that's how they work and things like that so when she does that or whatever when jinx was doing that i immediately know what's going on you have a lot of brown skin you know, people who can pass as Jamaican white, a lot of them in Jamaica. And they come from very, very humble backgrounds, very humble backgrounds. But because of all them look and whatever this and that, they believe that they need them, you know, them up in other class there. And so they spend all this effort selling themselves that they're legitimacy of that space because aesthetically they believe that they fulfill the requirements for them to be a qualified, legitimate member of that class just by the way they look and think so. They, they spend all this time now disparaging others. I am because you are. So they, when they get up another, you are. And he's, so that's what she was doing. She was just saying, you know, you saying is this and that he's such a boot to because she's trying to send a message about herself. And I'm glad all you see never appear in a mind or whatever. You have to know your value because you have people like that out there who would try to tear you down and to try to define you differently. And it happens in relationships too, you know, right? That's what I always say. Be yourself. But you can't be yourself until you know yourself. And yes, a lot of people don't know themselves. You know, a lot of people don't have a sense of definition because they're like a feather in the wind, you know. They just be whatever this space I said they must be and be whatever I want to say they must be and be the one I said they must be and whatever. But just be yourself. I make the world adjust. Be yourself. I make the world adjust. In general. Don't think like that if you start working someplace though, right? Don't don't go in there and be like, you know, you start working at I don't know. You start working at some corporate entity. You're like, I'ma be myself or whatever this and that. Nah, nah, nah. Don't that's not what I mean, okay? Once you go in there, there's some form of conformity. There's a culture there. There's a work culture there. You have to fit in in some way, whatever. You know. But I'm just saying in general, you know, in terms of who you are in your, in your own space, you know, when you go out and whatever, and you're dating or you're with friends or whatever, and this and that. Or even if you're working someplace or you follow the corporate rules or whatever, at the same time, you know, you be yourself, you know. Once you be yourself, trust me, the world adjusts. They have no choice but to adjust. It's either them going to ignore you or adjust. And if they ignore you, fine. You know, but who acknowledges you and give you the value that you know you have, those are the people you work with. But remember, a diamond don't mean shit to a pig in a, in a, in a pigsty. It's just a shiny object. The pig is incapable of seeing the value in the diamond. I know a very popular DJ bought, back in Jamaica, bought a ridiculously expensive outfit for a woman he was seeing, who just happened to be from, you know, a ghetto area and thing or whatever. A nice girl or whatever they said. But she go dance and she jumping at the dirt and rolling at the dirt and dance and she have a good time, which is what she always does. And he never have a problem with it. And his thing was like, you see how much money me pay for the thing and whatever, and the, and my cousin and whatever, and, and my girl, you're dancing and dirty and the clothes and whatever, and look at me. You don't even know what you're this and that and whatever. And, and I remember she's looking at him like, what are you, what are you talking about? You know? She's looking at him like, you look so strange right now. Like, what me do? It wasn't for her fault. She just, she just, just no, she's just not in that world. She's not in that world. So I, if you understand that, I 
him fi understand that, you know. And if she's, you know, and she not dead, she not dead. Additionally, if uh, I remember, I was dating someone, and I was just like, yeah. I'm going to impress her and all this stuff and whatever. And I took her to this restaurant. At the time, it was in um, Ligony. It was called Guild Trip. And um, she's never been to some place like that. So I was just like, yeah, I'm going to carry her. <laughs> and we were at the restaurant and she was there. She was just most uncomfortable. And I'm, just, and I'm trying to comfort her. And I'm like, you know, I'll help you order and whatever. And she was just like, this is somebody who's usually expressive and fun. And, and she was just like uptight and she, you know. And um, I saw her looking at, you know, like the different utensils and stuff. And she just like, no, I don't want a menu or whatever and all this stuff. And um, and I was trying to just get her to be comfortable and things like that. And, and she just wasn't there. And, and then after I, you know, when the, when the waiter came and I'm talking to her and, I'm, you know, and I, and I'm like, what is she like? I'm like, you don't want us to have them? No, 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 no. I'm like, okay. Okay. Jump back in our car, we go back down a south and thing. And she said, I'm buy a box food. <laughs> and she go buy a box food and she come up. And she sit up on the sidewalk, I'm sit on the with her, I'm a watch her I eat her box. I didn't judge her. My thing was she did nothing wrong. Right? She did nothing wrong. Is um you could get caught up with thinking that you know better for somebody or you want somebody to have ambition and and you and, and then you believe that you're supposed to if they don't pursue what you want them to pursue, you know, at that time, then you start believing something wrong with them. And, oh, them don't know better and thing, and them don't know good things and what. No, sometimes it's not that, you know. Yeah, they don't because them don't grow up in other world. But sometimes they at a stage in them life where them not ready to appreciate something like that yet, right? Don't try to force them on thing, and there's nothing wrong with them. They're they're not any less human because um you know, you know they don't understand that or whatever you know. So I'm just saying there's a there's a humanitarian element to it for you to be understanding, and to be and to be careful of how you judge people, you know, of their value because if that's where they see themselves at that time. There's not nothing. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. That is all them see themselves that time. Now, you may meet another person who you expose them to something, which has happened, and they're like, "Wow," and they want to learn more, and you're like, "Okay, boom, 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 boom." And you've heard this story before, where people said, "No boy, I'm have to rate that woman there, and I'm have to rate that man there, and because." Them see value in me when I never seen on myself, you know, and, and them make me know so I can rise to so and so. Yeah, you have them people eh? so and then you have growth and then you have increase in value and you have expansion in value and things like that. But they're not necessarily there and if they're not there, they're not there, right? And that brings up the issue of compatibility you now. And that's why for relationship, sometimes you need to know what is what. And if you're not compatible with the person, there's nothing wrong with that. Them just at a different space than where you there. And then you have to now know if you're functioning in a space where their incompatibility is going to become a liability on you. You may have to make some unpleasant choices there and be like, well, you know, he's not for me, she's not for me, you know, because I need to function in this space, she's not functioning in this space, da 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 da. Or you may say, she can't function in a space, he can't function in a space, but she is more valuable to me than the space. So it might be the case that you reject that space that may seem materially better, but there may be something going on here between you and this person where you're like, no, man, I want it with that person, right? So, you know, this is the person for me.
So I just you have to know what I go on this. You understand? But you have to know your value. I know what you want. I know what make you happy. And be able to stand by that. And when somebody come and want to define you a certain way, when you know say it's not for you, you will not go slavishly follow them. If you think that they're so, you know. You know, we reason our minds and talk about this and that and we 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 I'm a share with them and all these things. As I spontaneously do sometimes. Okay. Uh see somebody sent me something here and thing like that. Okay. Alright. Mago juggle you know um tomorrow again. And then tomorrow is um is the eve of our departure for Kissimmee in Orlando. So tomorrow is um tomorrow is basically um the last show before Friday, but it's the last show where seriously speaking tomorrow's show is an opportunity for the Ansnes crew to apologize, you know, and to say, we not take our team right guy now because we don't think it's a good idea because we realize that we will be um, demolished. Um, it would be our annihilation and things like that. So tomorrow's show should be an, um, should be viewed as an opportunity for the Ansnes crew to say, Listen now, we kind of pick off too much than um, we can handle, and um, we realize the fallacy, you know, in our actions here. And that being said, you know, you are uh, not comfortable with Team Raga. You know, we need to have a different name for your team. You know, I don't, I don't want my name. I don't want my name in the team. So, people, our team, you know, we we need to have a. You know, we need to have a name, you know. I don't know, big and crew or something, or insecticide or whatever. <laughs> yeah, something, you no, know, something, something. And you know, with me, with everyone, we don't force it. We allow it to come, you know. But um, I'm just saying that um, in this, you know, reasonable people here, so. In the spirit of um, good faith and so forth and thing, we just want the Anthony screw it the dream team, Charm. What do you say? The dream team. Dream team. Nah, we don't want dream team because we're gonna give them too much ammunition. This if we beat me. No, they're gonna beat with too much. I dream you yeah, dream, nothing a real and thing or whatever. Uh, ah, spray them crew. <laughs> yeah, that kind of sound better. <laughs> I like it. Spray them crew better. But we can't say dream team because they would have beat out when I say this. So, what are you be a dream and a dream? What do you know about reality? What are you whatever about the spray them crew? Yeah, that probably, yeah. No way I get in a big right this up. But I'm just saying that tomorrow is an opportunity for one um, Java Mayor and CBS and Pretty Punchy and. Um, you know, and Tarsha and their newly inducted member, Fabi Dali, aka Del Marine, to um apologize, you know. And um I just want you guys to know that I would, you know, we have a tentative name right now, which is the Spray Them Crew, right? <laughs> like <laughs> look which is a takeoff and the scare them crew, you know, the spray them crew. I like it. Right, um, yeah, just want you guys to know that um, we are well aware that, uh, you know, you, you, between now and tomorrow, you could, you know, um, be conscious that um, you bit off more than you can chew. And that um, you may decide to apologize. And uh, we'd welcome your apology, you know. We, we, you know, we, we're reasonable people here and whatever. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, Fabi Dali, yeah, the no Fabi name, the Fabi Dali, Del Marine, Fabi Dali, yeah. All right. So tomorrow is an opportunity for an apology. All right. 
pretty punchy. Raga, apologizing to you is like telling myself I can't have any more porridge. That will never happen. Uh, righty. Um, hello. Raga. Yes. Raga Shanti. Yes. God bless you, my brother. Oh, you do. Good man. And you know what I'm... Yeah. I love your program, man. You do? All right. Blessings. Man. Yes, yes. And you know what I'm... Yeah, what up? I am like your... I am like your brother. You don't know me. But I know you're good. Okay. You're like my brother? Yes. All right. All right. All right. All right. I, I text you and I subscribe to your channel and... As a human being, yes. with respect, yes. and I am the guy that always texts you, and not, you know, not trying to get you, um, I don't know what to say, but anyway, um, the Oliver I, boy I, I, I is I think you have the thing playing in the background, so it might be a little bit confused. All right, but you know what, let me turn it, let me turn it down. Yeah, don't turn worry. it down a little bit there, please. Yeah, man, so anyway. Um, no, no, but what I'm saying, um, yeah, you know, you know, quite a few people text me, you know. So yeah, I, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure which one would you be, but well, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain myself to you. And yeah. as a human being, I do respect you. And yes, sir. For where you're coming from, as as a human being, and I appreciate you, and I do respect you. Um, for where you're coming from, and where you're being now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, I am Ian. Ian. Okay. Right. Pebbles. I used to be at Oliver Boys Home. You used to be at Oliver Boys Home? Y yes, sir. Yes, well, sir. Uh, were you there when I was there? Yes, sir. Your name is Kings Stewart. Correct. And so, I was the Indian. Remember you, those two young Indians? Um, you <laughs> you may be... Hold on, when also, I was hold on, there, hold on, hold on. You... you didn't move to Port Royal with us, then. Eh? Yeah, man, yeah, man. Me, I was living there with, with um, uh, with this all uh, these um duty officer um, Mister Plowright. You know, Mister Plowright. Yeah, man, Mister Plowright, Mister Skyers, Mister yeah. Edgel. Yeah, yes, yes. Miss, yes. Miss. The first lady that died there from cancer, I went to her funeral. Um, oh my God, what's her name? She, I went to the funeral, but I keep texting you, I keep calling you, but as I said, I'm not trying to be a pest to you, but I am like a younger brother to you. And right, I, as I right, said, I do. Right. And, and again, I, people, do I just respect. want you to know that when we were younger, I was in boys' home in Jamaica. Because yes. Yeah. It's happen. not a crime. I mean. It's not a crime. You, no, no. You, you, say, know, what, you, you what, know what was you, my charge when I was with? Because my, the first boys' home I went to was Musgrave, you know. Miss, all right, all right. Miss Rupert. Remember me, this lady that died near Miss Rupert? Something like that? I don't remember. Miss Rupert, you remember we had Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Robinson. And yeah, well, I know all of those. I know all of those. Mr. Mr. Um Mr. Plowright was our our favorite super um Right. And the superintendent was yeah. Mr. Chambers, Desmond Chambers. Mr. Chambers, he was a wicked guy. He used to beat me with a cane. Um well, yeah, well, some of us got beaten, yeah. All right. Waggy, you remember Waggy? Yeah, man, I don't know Waggy, man, and, and, and Rocky. Yeah, then... Waggy and Rocky, then, uh, them a parry, them, the man, and Bassa. Bassa, we cut up the boy when we have the big fight there. Yeah, me and Bassa, yeah, we did, yeah, me and Bassa did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I keep texting you, I keep calling you, and, but that's not the story. You know what I'm, I keep telling people, said, this guy, I grow with him, and the thing that I respect him, because, he went through a rough time in life and it wasn't easy for us growing up as our friend, like Yellow Man. You remember King Yellow Man? Right, right. Grew up at Alpha Boys Home. Right, and right. And you, lots of guys like you, growing up at the Boys Home, you get your scholarship and you make use of it. And it it's so good uh, people, what to see refer, people what like... What he's referring to is that, well, I never knew a father. 
And I, I was actually, yeah, I'm the same. Nolan, I am the my, same. my charge was actually care and protection. I don't know if you remember those days, it was a care and protection. But yeah, then um, no. when my mother died. Care and protection, I was the same, just like you. Oh, you were, you, your charge was care and protection. So when my mother same died, thing. I was same classified thing. as an orphan in the system. In the, the I am the same. System. I system. am the same. Right. And then, my brother was Michael Brown. I am Ian Brown. Ian Brown and Michael Brown. Okay. Yes, the two Indians. I you we live there. You maybe five years after you move on to the state. Oh, okay, okay. okay. And Garfield, remember Garfield and yeah, man, we know Garfield, man. Right, Garfield, Kermit, Kermit died from. The virus, you know what I'm talking. Oh, Kermit died Kermit. from um, the, oh, I didn't yeah, know, yeah, I didn't yeah, know. the big A, yeah, he died, he died from the big A. You remember, you remember Maxwell? I know Maxwell, I know everybody, yeah, Maxwell is still alive and he's in um, Baltimore doing really well. I don't know well, what happened to Jughead, I don't know what happened to Jughead. Jughead, no, I don't know what happened to Jughead, be honest to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. um. Mark, Mark, that's the younger brother of um, Garfield. There was no Mark, Mark. There was three brothers. Three One brothers, of them is yeah. police now. Yeah, yeah, man. I know who you're Mark. referring to, man. Yeah, and Mark, he, he had stayed over in Port Royal. Parkinson. You know, the younger Mark Farkins. He's still in Port Royal. Mark Farkins. Oh yeah, he's still in Port Royal. That is just what I say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his brother Dave, David. His brother is a police. Oh, okay, okay. So, I respect you, man. I well, love well, you. Well, you I'm going to ask you something very important now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you remember Dennis Meadows? Yes, sir. I do. I'm going to share something with you, and you're probably going yes, to be sir. shocked. I mean, hold anyway. On, hold on, I'm, hold on, hold on. You know, uh, hold, on, okay, you know okay, Dennis, hold on, you know that Dennis Meadows was in the JLP, right? Before, yeah, I don't know that. And he was a senator in the JLP, and then he switched, and then he was in the PNP and was going to be a member of parliament in the PNP. Ne never know that. Uh, never but know then that. And recently, they, the leader of the PNP said, Yeah. You know, he make a comment and go say, him, 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 you know, him understand why the chap of them do what they have to do. And, and he got yeah, yeah, chapter. yeah. Oh, that was oh, that was Dennis Meadows? That was Dennis Meadows. Would you be Just tell that shit. Hold Stupidness on. there, idea. No, no, right, but would you believe? I swear to you, when he was in the JLP, and uh, Bruce Golden was in the JLP, and they were coming to do an outside broadcast, yeah. and, and I was just so yeah. happy to see him. And I went yes. to him and I said, "Dennis, what well, man, boy, I'm a pro of the young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See where we are yeah. coming from, man. Just like you, know. just like you. Right. You when, don't remember me, you know. You don't I, remember me, you know. Ian, Ian, would you believe Dennis said to me, what are you talking about? Yeah. And I said, we were in boys home together. And Dennis was like, I don't know what you're talking pretend about. Like, pretend like he doesn't know. And I'm like, Dennis, what are you talking about? It's what we did the boys yeah. home together. We were in right. Like, yeah. And he was like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know anything about yes. the boys home. Yes. He turned and walked away. And I was just like, wow. That was it. I don't cut you. That was it. That's your dunk fall there. What? When he told you that, he, oh no, he don't know about a boy's room. Yeah, I just, but you can't deny because in something that you were in for no, years and years and years. I don't Kingsley, know. Kingsley, yeah. Kingsley, yeah. Kingsley. In life, yeah. One thing I don't know. I, I didn't go to mama and dad. Lots of us from the boy's home. Don't forget where you're coming from. Oh, I, 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 I never will. I, you know. And you, you know what I'm. I watch your program. I always text you, but one day you ask me, oh, "What's your name? Who are you?" Yes, you're right. And I, 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 you I, ne yes. I never, I never reply to you. You know why? Why? I was just trying to be anonymous to you. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah, and as I said, I respect you as a human being because you know why? Yeah. yeah. You elevate yourself, and you, 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 you being like, um, a. They would say a pun and what they call it. There's this word in life that they would say pun and fit curse, something or another. 
I'm not that very intelligent. You no, go no, no, to no, a no. higher school than no, me. No, you're, you're, you're very... No, no, intelligence has nothing to do with intellect, you know. You're very intelligent, you know. No, I've, I've only been to Portugal all at school. That's the only school I've ever been to. Well, you, you, I'm listening to you so far, and you're a very intelligent person, okay? Yeah, so every time I text you, you try to feel out, who is this guy? What are you texting me? Who is you? What is your name? Oh, well, yeah, because I'm um, usually have to be careful with who is texting me. And texting no, me. I know, and the internet, social media, but exactly. you are my brother, and I love you. Blessings, my brother, and I love you too. And and every you remember those two dummies, Perky Dumb? It was three. Blah, blah, it was blah. Three. It, was three. it was three. No, there's a dumb in still in Portugal. Glorious, glorious yeah, restaurant. Was, I mean, I don't mean John this Bethune. in a bad way, but it was ja little dummy, and he had preggy, and then he had John Bethune. One. John, John Bethune. Right. John Bethune is a smaller one, and you have two dummy. Well, no, it was four, not three, not three, not four. Oh, yes, you had the little skinny one that was very, you know, animated. Yeah, um, love guys, love guys. Yes, you're right, you're right. You're yeah, right. not being, cool. not cool. being rude. I'm not being rude, but, right, right. And, you and, know, and human being. Mean, every... Yeah, we're not putting them down. No, we're dumb. not. It's just growing up yeah. in the boys home yeah. and we're trying to explain our, right. you understand? Right, right, right. So you are a guy that I, I, I'm, I don't know what to say. But I respect you, and I'm glad to see where you are in life. Blessings, my brother. Blessings. And I, I, I'm, I am living in Canada now. You understand? All right. All right. My All brother right. died. My bigger brother died. Mm -hmm. My bigger brother died. Michael Brown. You, those times you were a bigger guy for us. Cause you remember there was um. The bigger guys from the younger guys in the boy. You know, there is two sections. Right, 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 right. right. Big boys and small boys. Right. But we, my, remember, there was like two Indians and in the boys on big. I don't, you may be not remembering. Yeah, some, some, yeah, some, you know, particular. So, anyway, re remember Mark, Mark Farkinson. Yeah. It, it was three brothers of them. Right. Richard Farkinson. You know Richard Farkinson. Right, right, right. You know Copeland Stewart. You know Copy, man. You know Copy died, though, right? Yeah, I know. I never know that. I know, but I know that. Um, Kermit died. Remember Kermit? Yeah, yeah. You mentioned that he died. I'm from, uh, yes, he died from the big head. I'm not going to... You understand? Okay, that's why. May, may, may soul rest in peace. It's like our brother took her. We were like... Where we come from, we are brothers. Right, okay. Right, indeed. And um, you, Bassa... You know Bassa good. Yeah, man. And Bassa, I'm a power, man. Bassa was like my best friend. Man. Right. Bassa and he, Jimmy. He, he, I don't know if you remember Jimmy McCook, you know? Um, Jimmy McCook, um, I wouldn't know. Well, I yes. maybe know, but I'm um, anyway. Um, but and remember, um, Dan Lover, you know, Dan Lover, not quite Dan right. Lover, Dan Lover, he used to, you know, Dan Lover, man, and um. Ah, uh, well, I like, don't want to spend the rest of the time to people that listen to you and I reminisce. Probably this is a conversation. You know, we, but we can just you know, Adam. Yeah, you, know. You, you know, often, you know, often, yeah. life is is a long tail, man. And right, I'm just happy to see you elevate yourself in Thank life you, and coming pleasure, from man. where you're from. Just, I am Ian Brown. Ian Brown. I will never forget you. My and my brother died. The, the, we were we were the two Indian f with the, from the boys home. Ian okay. Brown, Michael Brown. Right. My bigger bigger brother died. Okay, Michael. And you, you you remember Clive, right? You know Clive. I think so. I, I can't pick up. The Clive he used to have that. Clive and Dan Lover. You remember Dan Lover? Um, not quite. But Carla, yeah, at some point, you and I are going to talk and we're going to reminisce some more and thing and, you know. Yeah, man. But, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm just really, it's a really good hearing, you know, the voice of somebody who, 
was there, right there with me when we were going I, through. Listen to me, I know you're right good, man. Right? And I know you're good. And you know what I'm? Yeah. I respect you and I do, 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 do respect you from where you're coming from and to see a guy from like a, a, a young a generation without no help that put himself in a, a situation mm -hmm. to make the world know that you don't have to have this big support to be a man of your own. And for younger kids to know that you can become a man without a mother or a dad. Because okay. that's where we, we are coming from. That's okay. what I'm trying to tell the world. And before we go, I don't want to hold up your program. Mm -hmm. the, the first year when you came to Alpha Tree, I tried to I chase you. I chase you, but the security wouldn't let me find you because I was trying to get to you. Okay. I came to half a tree when you was on. Remember the first time you came back to Jamaica? Right, 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 right. I, yeah, I was trying to get in touch with you, man, and they said, no, it's, it's not that just easy. You understand? Right, right, right. right. Yeah, but my brother... This is Ian Brown, Ian Brown, your brother, your young, your younger brother, Pebbles. My name was Pebbles. I was the weakest football in Port Royal growing up as a our front in the boys' home. Our front being, you know what I'm saying. Right, right, right. right what you yeah. Did, like, okay. Yeah, we used to play football. Yeah. We, you know, you know, we stuck. Yeah, man, we yeah. know, you know, we back kid, man. the ball and thing. All right, then, cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, me, 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 the boss, man. A Port Royal school, me go, put, and... The thing with Moa, you see a program, Moa of it, you see Port Royal School, man, yeah. is a place where me love and me bless because a Port Royal, me, I mean, you know, me just cry water because it's a place where, as it means, you, a, lot the you. It means you, a lot to you. It means a lot to you. Yeah, man, yeah, man. It, it, tears come to my eyes, man, because every picnic from this, so, big boy, young boy, yeah, like, Sometimes I cry, sometimes sometime I even want to be alive when me, me even know some of my brother them gone. Oh, okay. So when I see a man like you, tears tears come to my eyes, man. Bless you know, enough of my brother them dead and gone, and I even know what they, what become of them. You understand? Okay. Well, um, yeah, but, man. So, but you are here, and um, the, you know, with, and it's just a joy, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. both of us have <laughs> yeah. the opportunity to speak to each other and thing, all right? Yes, I'm one of the world world know, say, you, you sitting on this program, yeah, you, Dr. King Stewart, sitting on this program, yeah, it was not an easy road for you, <coughs> and okay. you got through this program, and you fighting through this world. Because you have a smart head on your body. And without a smart head on your body, you wouldn't be where you are today and, and this day. You understand? All right. Blessings, Ian. Blessings and respect. Here. Yeah, man. So more on this. Keep me. In. All right? Yeah, man. I'm going to escape me now. Keep you in my heart. And I wish all of your kids and your family all the best. Ah, bless you, man. And, and you my too. word is, listen, my word is, big up to the world. So anytime you hear this, Ian Jagai, big up to the world, love all the people, and love all the good people in the world. Bless, ah, big you, up, love. You, yeah, man. Blessings, man. Yeah, right. man. I'm going to love you. I love you. You're my bigger brother, you know. All right, my brother. Blessings, man. Love and blessings. You're my bigger you. brother. So remember me. Remember me. Yes, man. Ian Brown. Ian Jagai, bro. Yeah, all man. Right? Ian Brown. Right. That, I mean, that I mean deep old name. Mr. Father name. Ian Jagai. Yeah. Okay, all right then. Blessings. Ian. Yeah, I don't hide nothing. Because I don't hide nothing for you. See him, so. See him, so. All right. Yeah, man. Because we don't hide nothing. All right, man. I'm big all up right. to the world. and love yeah. everybody in the world. Yeah, man. Cool, cool. I mean, love you. I love you as many you better. Bless. Keep going to doing the good things, man. And just, I don't have no to explain it to you. No, but I me appreciate it. you. I feel it. I feel it. Me man. appreciate you. Sometimes right. I cry. Bless me you. cry. Yeah, man. Cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And keep up the good work. Thank you, my brother. Cool. And see love you. Me. Love you. Love you. Love you. Blessings. Blessings. Cool. Cool. All right, my brother. Mm -hmm. All right. Ian Brown right there. Um... 
why I can say, you know, I'm genuinely feel it and thing and is is one thing, you know, when somebody um know of some tough times that you have been through. It's one thing when people know of it. But as many you know, it's a whole different ball game when you know it's somebody was been there with you, <laughs> you know, you know, so that person that he did it with you, you know, when you go through it, you know. And um, and um, for many of you, it's similar thing. You have your relatives and your siblings or or whatever. Who they know what it was like when you did a go through certain things when you come forward up in this world, you know? And, um, boys home in, boys home in Jamaica is not an easy thing, you know? But thankfully we had um, people there who, who, you know, appreciated children and loved human beings and treated people good, you know? And there were some who were not like that. And there was some craziness there too, some unpleasantries and, you know, and it, it got rough at times, you know, because uh, we had a lot of children there. I mean, the reason why you were there is because there is some significant problem in your life, you know as children, right? So that's why you were there. And um, unfortunately, it also had um, children who, you know, we were around quite a few kids who, you know, who, you know, who killed the people, you know, but because they were kids, they had to go to a boys' home, a government boys' home and thing, you know? So, um I I couldn't surf in there. You can't surf in there, you know, cause you surf this, so you you become a target, you know, and uh, so it did rough. It did rough. So not only was it rough, but then there was a stigma too. Like if you're a boy's home, like. You know, people would look down on you and them call it institutional boy and them look at something there or whatever. So there was some some stigma too and, you know, and some of us dealt with it in different ways, you know. We were young and we didn't understand, so there was some shame there that we didn't understand and all this stuff and whatever. And, you know, and... You know, Jamaica as a country in general has its challenges. Just, so just imagine, like, you know, growing up all those years in a, in a government institution, you know. It was, um, it was rough. It was rough. So to, to hear somebody like him calling and to know that he was there when I was there, whatever, you know, it's like, you know, it's, you know, clearly he is able to, um, um, oh, and there he is, he's posting on, um, and, um, in, um, on the Tom from TV page on YouTube, you know, that's his name right there, Ian Jagai. And, um, it's just one of them things the way if somebody did dead it and they know what it is like, it's just like so when you hear him I say my brother, you know, you're like my brother and that's where I'm really I come from, you know. It's like you must say, Yo, you're like a big brother to me, uh, you know, I must say you're my brother and I love you, you know, cause you're my brother because and that's where you must come from too, you know. And basically I said, Janua, you know, you are somebody who we go through that something there together, so we, you know, we, we we know what it was like for go through, you know, because I was in government institution like for probably eight years, you know, like from ten till eighteen, something there, but no, I, it was from nine till eighteen, something like so, you know. Now, 
it was before that. It was about No, Musgrave Boys Home. Um, what age was that? Uh, no, it was about from 10, 10, 11, somewhere there about. So, uh, yeah, from 10, 11. Yeah, it was about uh, 10, about 11. From age 11, I think. Because after my pass, my common entrance, and my pass, when I passed common entrance, I was 10 years old. <laughs> you know, them after, back in the day, it was first choice, second choice, third choice. But if you're born after the first of September, you had three choices. I made it pass it with my first choice. So I would pass at 10. And when I passed, I was at Percy Street. So, and then we're going at first form, and then boys. Will, yeah, so it's around, around 11 until 18. So, you know, You know, we had a young boy now, I wonder if I'm just be able to talk to somebody who did did it when me did did it, you know, and know the people them and all these things. It's uh so that's where he's coming from when he's saying we're brothers. And that's where I come from, you know, and like yeah, I'm a brother that, you know, cause you know, we did it rise through the system, you know. So we have to give thanks, no? And they are so can will I laugh with with you. A community, time from, and we can share and grow together, you know. And like he was saying, you know, how many of people who we know who have died and gone and and and, and so forth, and, and we there still I give thanks, though. So we just want to bless him up, you know. Just want to bless him up. Ian Brown, Ian Jagai. Just want to bless him up and thing and, and thank him for calling and, and share the energy there, you know? You know, and the endorsement and the support and and just the genuine, 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 genuine um, love and affinity way my express, you know? And thing and uh, Ian, you're an intelligent man. Know that you are an intelligent man. You know, right? And the way you express yourself and your reasoning, and you're talking about where we're coming from and so forth like that. That is intelligence. That is intelligence. Okay. All right. You're a very intelligent man. Know that. For real. All right. Okay. So Ian, thanks sharing and giving me a nice moment a nice feel here for us to um, exit the show tonight and thing all right blessings my brother i wish you and yours all the best and and for everybody else who you know you can remember you know a time in your development in your growth in your youth you know when things were trying and and difficult uh you you know you surmounted some significant um, challenges and difficulties and things and you can be thankful now at this stage in your life big up on yourself same way too all right blessings man all right okay cool i'm gonna let go here now and then tomorrow again all right yeah man clear to god and tony big up yourself you know yeah, yeah, Jogger did sickly and him drop out too. He said, yo, bro, you remember Miss Beckford, Miss Creary, and Miss Groves from Musgrave Boys Home. Me not really remember them so good, you know, because when I went to Musgrave Boys Home, um, I was still going to family court. And then um, while I was going to family court, then they had sent me to um, Homestead Place of Safety, which was for boys at that time. And I was uh, at Homestead Place of Safety. Again, Musgrave Boys Home is one, and then Homestead Place of Safety is another one. Call it Reformatory School. Some people call it Young Prison. So, you know, you're basically on lockdown 24 hours. But, um, you know, but we're allowed to get in the yard and these things. But, um, and then is when I left Homestead Place of Safety, they sent me to Olivia Boys Home. 
And then, of course, Olivia Boyzo must move over to Port Royal. Right? So all of that happened over a seven-year period for me, just living in um, government institutions, boys' own, and reformatory schools and things. And it was... Um, It was quite a coming of age period, you know. Uh, they say you have to learn certain. Second, from a bridge, you know, me know we, we teach me certain things. Weather, we teach me certain things as south. Second, from that, you know, boys, um, you learn some of them, you know. And you learn some unpleasant things too, but so it goes, you know. The Gandhi and. And both all a smile, right? And you have a lot to be thankful for, you know? All right? Blessings.